chat. I mean, hello, chat. Uh, now they can hear you dying. There you go. Strength. Who watch, who watch Dune 2 already? I have Let's not seen it. When am, I, when am I gonna be able to go to a movie theater? Yeah, you can. Come here, go see it with me. My, nobody can. Well, then, yeah, go go watch it fine. with Mike. One of my people fun. here like this. Like, dude, they crazy it's a good doing movie. Out of pity. It's a fun movie. Then I'll film you fucking the popcorn bucket. Yeah. No. Welcome to our uh, special Patreon. That's the next. That's the next movie. Yeah. Let's see two movies from them. Where the one fucking happened. <laughs> Uh, okay, uh, Christian, I know, I, listen, I know it's a different country, but can you get me a copy of that Chilean Star Wars that has the, uh, the Cerveza what? Cristal commercials is, in it? Yeah, I can, I see, let me see, I'll, I'll, I'll hook you up. Have, let, you, let have me, you seen this, Sean? <laughs> Clearly not. Yeah, it, it, look, look into it on Twitter real quick. It's, um, they, they, oh, it's they wanted to show it without, they wanted to show it without commercials, so they cut, they yeah. spliced in beer Bro. ads into the movie. <laughs> So it's yeah, like yeah. it looks like um, Star Wars. It looks like Han Solo is like guys. opening up a a cooler of cerveza cristal. Fuck yeah! Go, okay, beer still around. I want some. Right. Oh, this is so good! It's so <laughs> incredible. <laughs> Apparently, it won oh a bunch of God, awards, like advertising amazing. awards. Uh, it's amazing. It's genius, <laughs> if you ask me. Pretty genius. I, I bet you, you both the I'm fucking a lightsaber of off his robe as a goddamn beer. <laughs> it's great. incredible. I'm gonna Holy absolutely shit. watch that. Yeah, it's, it's good. Okay, it's good. I think I saw it on TikTok. It was like that's pretty good. All right, I think we are <laughs> mostly good to go. Let me just get the music and then we'll get started. All that trays picked up uh, Corona out of like, and then fucking Javier <laughs> Bandemi is like, listen, all guys. He's so I, humble. I got three packs in Disney World Fire Hair, and they're like amazing packs. I got two legendaries. I only had one legendary amongst like 25 packs before that. I got two in Disney World. They must juice up those Disney World packs. Yeah. I, let's, I'm, I'm with you on that. They're definitely. Oh, wait. Hang on. Mike, are they uh, hollow foil? Um, the, this legendary is. I didn't show this one yet. But I got a Mickey Trumpeteer legendary hall foil. The lucky dime I got, which is the card I won the most, isn't legendary or isn't hall foil. But doesn't matter. I need to just play that card. Okay. Now you yeah, see. Now you see. That's important because do you know about pack weighing? No. They, uh, oh right, where they that's actually a like thing. by the grams. Yeah, by the oh, grams. You, you take out cost a more. milligram scale, well, and then yeah, you just so that won't that won't help necessarily because every Lorcana pack does have one hall of foil. You just don't know which card it's going to be. Oh, uh, okay, okay. So gotcha, you just might gotcha. a lot of times you just get a common hall of foil. So it's like lucky to get the legendary be hall of foil. Gotcha. All right, chef. Uh, the, the music was kind of low. I think. That yeah, know. it's it's fixed now though. It's I got it all. all right, perfect, I got it all perfect. jacked and ready to go. Uh, Mike, I'm ready if you're ready. Yeah, let's go. Five, four, three. Nope, wrong button. Shit. <laughs> hey, you guys hear me? Start cheering now. <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's get this over with. <laughs> Woof woof. Hi, I'm Mike Minotti, and I'm dying. Hi, I'm Jeff Grubb, and I'm feeling better than ever. Woof woof. <laughs> and we are the last of the Nintendo. <laughs> uh, today, Yuzu and Citra are shutting down. We got Mario Day stuff for coming. But Jeff, uh, hey, how are you doing? I, I It's actually Good? no joke. Uh, I, I uh, started... Um, Doing different exercises, I started meditating, and I this brain fog I had for like the last month has mostly gone away. Nice. I'm feeling really good. That's great. Uh, yeah, I'm. I'm. I got sick. Like basically, as soon as I started sitting on the plane, I started sneezing more. I was like, "That's weird." On like, the plane there or the plane home? The plane back. So I was okay. fine there. Okay. I had a great Shoot. vacation. All right, good. It was fantastic. Then, like literally, uh, I just started falling apart as soon as I <laughs> got on that plane leaving Orlando. I was like, "It's not I'm supposed to stay." I left my glasses on there, which is why I have these backup ones now, which look better anyway. So I left my glasses <laughs> on there. Started feeling terrible. I don't know if it's related or not, but an old 
like uh, dental issue is popping up uh, again. I think you were going to say like uh, an, an old Romany woman like curse you or something. <laughs> no, old Romany, yeah. No, and then like, uh, then like, yeah, it's like this morning I was working. I was like, okay, I'll just take some day quill. I can get some more work done. Just took the night quill. I accidentally. Hell yeah. Course. So I was like, that's fine. I'll be a little sleepy. Oh, I, did, I did see that. I did see you say yeah. that. I, I guess you were just, I am figured you must have been doing it recreationally. I did. <laughs> Recreational <laughs> NyQuil, no. And I was like, that's fine. I can fight through NyQuil side effects. No, I couldn't. <laughs> After an hour, I was like, I'm, I'm going to bed. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, we'll see. I'll, I'll probably go visit Dr. Dad tomorrow and make sure this isn't anything more than just a thing. I took, a, I took one of my COVID tests when I got back, and that was... I'm uh, fine. I got to skip a funeral today, at least because of that. So, Hell hey, yeah. Hey. Fuck the dead. There you go. That's something. Um, But yeah, Jeff, I was just gone for a little bit. Just, uh, didn't miss any podcasts, but no. yeah, still missed you all anyways. Uh, so I got, I got I got to hop into our Q&A we did for the Patreon members, at least while I was doing E.T. one of the five times we did it. Our most ridden ride there uh, got E.T. rules. Uh, what is that ride? Is it, is it like uh, an older ride? Would it's, I have done it? It's the only original ride left. It's, oh, wow. It is okay. kind of like it's, but it's fun because um, your ride vehicles actually are bicycles. And they're all on a – like a bunch are on a platform. It's not like you're on one bike. But it's like – it's a suspended track. So all these platforms are on a bike, and you're on a bike. And you, like, go through E.T. And first it's like the movie. You're escaping the cops, and then you fly. You go over the city. But then it gets weird because you go to E.T.'s planet – and it should be wild in there. <laughs> it's like you have a great time there. Um, it's a really fun, charming ride. And like Universal is a lot of stuff more for teens and older people. Uh, so I like this one kind of. It's a dark ride, Jeff. Uh, you know, I know. Of course. <laughs> it's, yeah. This is like the one real dark ride they have. Uh, that, uh, I, I think I kind of vaguely do remember that now. Yeah. I, you know, I like E.T. a lot. I, I, it's something I don't think about all the time, but I like E.T. E.T.'s cool. I do. I see. And, and I found out by watching what a Disney food blog video before you go. There's like a few rides where if you just ask somebody there that works there, they'll give you like a tour. So as we got the ride, like, uh, can you give us a tour of E.T.? And they're like, yeah, just wait here. Then some like guy who works at came like, hey, yeah, let's we'll give you a tour. And he just like took us through the line and like other places. And that's an, that's amazing. Interesting things. Then at the end, he's like, OK, now you can go ride again if you want to skip the line. I was like, oh, that's nice. So, um. There's a few rides like that that do. I think the mummy does it there also. Oh, so, really? Uh, mummy rides worth, great. Yes, uh, people like that uh, tour a lot. Apparently, I don't do that mummy ride. That's right. scary. It, it, it would it'd be too much for you. Yes, it would be. But uh, yeah, the, the tour was a lot of fun. We got to learn some weird facts about the astronauts' uh, pants slowly falling down over time, and they can't <laughs> fix it because like it's not up to code the little hill they would have to go on to fix it. So they're just slowly pantsing themselves over the decades. <laughs> it's great. That's uh, that's very fun. Uh, I did, uh, there was some like Disney news, uh, and I was I was curious because it in, um, is of my interest. They're going to update Star Tours, and they're going to have Andor stuff in there. There's going to be some other bullshit in there. Uh, but I think, what does that mean, Mike? I, I guess I, it, I couldn't really I follow. So Star Tours is always is very easy to update okay. for them because that's just a similar. So that's stuff that they have been doing over time. Uh, like when like the newer, like when the that last trilogy of stuff was coming out, they would do things like add BB-8 into it right. or add a scene set on that salt planet and stuff like that. So um, it's just a way to kind of keep that right relevant. The whole point of that when they did the big redo in like the 2010s or whenever that was, it's like, oh, you don't know what sequences you're going to get. There's like a bunch of different beginnings, a bunch of different middles and a bunch of different ends. So sometimes they'll create new ones and slot them in there. OK, well, that's uh, that's fun. I, I was very curious to see that, but I wasn't sure what it entailed. That sounds that sounds like exactly how they described it. Because they're like, yeah, we'll just slot in all these different characters and you might get one of these. I'm like, OK, interesting. Yeah, they've been having to actually announce some stuff because there's some like uh, there's, there's some like rogue investors trying to get elected to the board. And they're like genius ideas are like, we should have AI create characters and things like that. So they're trying to fight, fight that off, uh, get the get people to vote for Disney's own approved board members and all that stuff. Disney, Disney politics. Right. Yeah. Okay, okay. I, I made I made some moves um, uh, since I left my job working as a, a, a journalist day to day. I did make some investments. One of the things I did buy was when everyone was complaining about Disney a few months back. I bought some Disney stock. It's up thirty five percent since I bought it. There you it. go. I was like, that's not that's not bad. That's pretty good. I just buy when people are freaking out, and it was it worked out hey, pretty well. You can uh, you could probably vote in this thing. You know what's funny is uh, 
You own more Disney than I do. I don't have any stock. Yeah. <laughs> Disney stock. Well, you, you, you know, you cover it technically, so you can't. You're not allowed to, according to uh, the Games Beat code, Venture Beat. Yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. probably better. Yeah, let's be, we'll be safe with that. All right, Jeff. There, uh, there actually, man, there was some weird news going on while I got there. One thing I don't even want to talk about. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you know, holy shit. But everything I mean, else, just idiots yeah. being idiots. And, like, I, I, I will say some of the idiots have, like, been like, uh, maybe we were wrong. And they've just kind of shut, like, they've gone away. Many more have just continued to pile on. But boy, it's been a right. nightmare out there. Uh, yeah, absolutely. But uh, on the Nintendo side, the uh, Yuzu lawsuit that we said was coming uh, has now been settled with Nintendo. Yep. Yuzu was the emulator that played Switch games. Um, you, it's, as part of the settlement, Yuzu was going to play Nintendo play pay nintendo 2.4 million dollars in damages and they're going to shut down yuzu but also citra the 3ds emulator that that same team uh worked on um jeff the, you know I, I, i'm a little less uh i don't know what the word to say is supportive or what i'm a little less concerned about emulators for modern consoles i don't really care if they're there i'm not going to get too upset if like somebody wants to go after them Whatever. I think probably they should be left alone. Citra really sucks. That's the yeah, 3DS. Stinks, uh, yeah. 3DS games are just not very easy to just plop onto other platforms. Nintendo doesn't up like has not really ported a lot of those. They have shut down the 3DS store. Um, it, it, you know, I, I guess this happened mostly because Yuzu was was not being very smart about how they were handling this. Yeah. They had a Patreon. They were like. Get, encourage people to pay them on Patreon. They would specifically help them do things like get Tears of the Kingdom running on there before the game came out. Right, Is and again, right? it's like the, the, that. That it's still like a gray area. What 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 Nintendo was arguing is by enabling people to bypass the protection. That is a violation of DMCA. So, like charging people for the emulator, still that. Hey, that's as far as we know, still fine to do. Like you're allowed to commercialize it. There was a, a bleem lawsuit back in the day from everything if anyone remembers Blame, I remember Blame. that that stuff was like enshrined some of that stuff so it, it's all like this like you know bypassing uh, uh, encryption all these other things and then teaching people how to uh defeat copyright protection that Nintendo was going after and so put by putting and putting that stuff behind the patreon is just gonna look really bad and it's and I'm not too surprised that they settled I'm, I guess I'm a little surprised it was so fast but as soon as they hired a lawyer Yuzu announced you know this um whatever the name of the company was, Tree Zone. Now I can't remember it, but uh, that that like actually made Yuzu. But when Yuzu hired the lawyer, I'm like, they are doing that to settle and they're going to have the lawyer handle that for them. And here we are a week later, $2.4 million and it's going away. Citra is a real shame. I, um, I'm, not, I'm not like emulating uh, 3DS all the time, but I do have Citra on my tablet and I that's where I play like a lot of the Professor Layton games when I'm like just like looking for something chill to play on the tablet. And it works great. It's so nice to have. Uh, it's games I've played a bunch of times before, and I'm just kind of revisiting it. And it feels completely absurd that that has to go away. Uh, but uh, they really did kind of fuck around and find out. Yeah, I got caught in the crossfire there a bit. Um, that $2.4 million that Yuzu has to pay Nintendo, I mean, they don't actually have that on in cash right now like how where's that money come from well i mean their patreon had 30 was making thirty thousand dollars a month so uh, it, it's, that would still be a lot of months to get to 2.4 million dollars yeah yes it would uh for sure uh they probably don't have 2.4 million dollars but um you know that's that's why they were doing it under an llc which was that's a pretty smart thing that they did uh that limited liability corporation is responsible for that 2.4 million dollars uh, Nintendo seems to be happy with that result, and basically what this just means is like that that company is going to have to b go bankrupt and, and dissolve, and and it could kind of like gobble up all these pieces in this and make sure that they, it can't easily reemerge as it was. It, the you know the code's out there, people have it. It's not going to go away um, like for good. But Nintendo has done a lot to suppress Yuzu here as part of this. So. Like, what what does this mean going forward for emulators? This is this just going to affect Yuzu and Citra? Is this the start of something? Are other emulators in trouble? Uh no, I, I not necessarily. I think I think it does put a little bit of a, a cooling effect. It, it ices the um, amount of 
investment of people's time into this because you know if, if people think hey i could get paid with through patreon and feel good about that stuff and and not be scared i'll do that and i'll spend more time on the stuff but you know even before people were figuring out how to monetize emulators um hobbyists have been emulating nintendo consoles for uh, you know as long as we can remember now at this point um that'll keep happening and people will still have interest it'll be like a number one hobby for people who are interested in computer sciences and and Nintendo won't be able to do anything about that. That stuff is still protected. Um, but I think in the meantime, it does mean like for for Switch emulation, as we get a little bit further down the line, there's going to be this big sort of gap in space where uh, that uh, just so stopped, and we might lose some knowledge. We might lose some some interest from people that like don't want to poke the bear. And so yeah, maybe Switch emulation won't be quite as great as we want it to be five years from now uh, because of this moment. I, it probably it'll, it'll probably be fine, but. Especially like, you know, Ry Ryujink seems like it's still out there doing its thing uh, quietly. Um, so hopefully the, this doesn't mean too much negative for long-term emulation. It, it, but, it, it, I mean, people are saying, you know, this is a settlement, not a win for Nintendo. This is, this is the result that Nintendo wanted. This is, they yeah, got sure. what they wanted here. Yeah, settlements <clears throat> often are like that. Um, all right, Jeff. You know, speaking of weird things happened while I was away, although I guess this was technically today as I was uh, coming home, but... Uh, What's going on with Warner Brothers? Um, they said that they want to make more live service games because their live service game Suicide Squad underperformed. Now, I think what they mean is they kind of want to make free to play mobile stuff. Yes. Which is I, I can get that. And when you're looking, saying, man, that was a big risk, risk with Suicide Squad. It took forever to make and it just didn't pay off. If we're going to be that risky, why don't we just do it with um, some 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 free mobile shit? OK. I am surprised that the company that made Hogwarts Legacy, the best-selling game of last year, is immediately like, yeah, there's no value in those kind of games. Now, maybe they've identified the correct problem that, yeah, those games, they're hard to make and they are risky. I don't know about this solution. Yeah, it's uh, it's weird. So it was a Morgan Stanley uh, sort of, you know, like it was kind of like a game speed event, right? Where someone from, uh, important from the a company comes on stage and answers some questions, talks yeah. about their strategy a little bit. And basically, they're like, yeah, we're we're, we're looking at ch changing things up. Uh, Suicide Squad didn't perform how we wanted it to. So we are looking more towards live service, free to play mobile. And those are the three things that, that he said. Um, and, you know, we like you said, the reason for that is that you can make a lot of those for relatively uh, a re relatively affordable budget, which is something we've talked about before, where it's like you could try a lot of those um, for about the same price as, as it would take to make one big game. And obviously, if you compare it to Suicide Squad, you know, nine years since the game before that, you're paying all those people to make that game. Uh, you compare that to anything, and it's really like, well, that this is a much better deal than that. Um, but you, you're right. Like, it, th people have been saying that this is the answer to their problems for forever, and it just has not turned out to be the case. Right. We've been hearing this forever, right? Forever. Like, you know, it, well, I was there when EA, like, had their conference and they showed off their the, the minion game and treated they tried to pretend like that was just as big a deal as the new mass effect and like what happened? no one remembers that minion game that was probably a simpsons tapped out clone right yeah and nether realms like, had like several mobile games at this point i know they at least had the wrestling game but i thought they had a uh, mortal Kombat uh mobile game as well and it's like there was something like that that's there's no way that's making nearly as much money but, as making a mortal Kombat video game for consoles but it sure seems like the real problem is just tacking on life service stuff and being really aggressive with that monetization in a way that is really distasteful for a lot of gamers. Mortal Kombat 1 has been struggling. It's become under a lot of fire like yeah, that. Sure. It feels like it's really gotten lost in the shuffle of Street Fighter and Tekken. And if you told me, hey, Tekken, Street Fighter, Mortal Kombat are all going to come out, which one's going to be the biggest hit? I'd be like, obviously, Mortal Kombat. It's huge. It has a way bigger audience. Um, and it just feels like it's getting lost in there. A bit and then yeah, well, Su Suicide Squad is so frustrating, Jeff, because it's just so it was just so obvious a bit of it from the beginning that maybe this wasn't a great idea. And then it's like the more and more they show, it's like, what are you thinking? What are you doing here? Nobody like like Super Hero Fatigue is definitely settling in. This is going to take so long to come out. Who knows how much people really care about the Suicide Squad? Why do you think people want to kill Batman instead of playing as Batman? Like it's just it was just so clearly a disaster that could not be avoided i guess but I, I i can't believe that we're sort of doing the autopsy here and this is the conclusion we're coming up with yeah i mean at a certain point these are 
executives that don't have a vision. And that's the thing we've been saying on this show yeah. and our other shows for forever now that they, they just don't know what to do. And so they say the things that are at least give them a chance to be like, well, we're making stuff and we're going to make a lot of it. And some of it's going to work. Um, and it's, it's not going to break the bank to make these things. Um, I do think it probably is hard to come out of suicide squad and be like, we are going to try immediately to have them make another game. That's going to be, you know, just as big or bigger than that. Like, I, and like you can't go out there and say, it's going to be, you know, well, we're going to pull things back and do things smaller. Um, because that sounds like that sounds bad to investors and it might scare off gamers as well, where it's like, you know, just make something with, with the same amount of oomph, behind, but make it something that people actually want to play. Um, so I'm not surprised that they feel like they have to, to, uh, like say something here it just it, it's clear that this is not going to be the solution we can look at the recent history of all these games we mentioned uh, I, I, on bombcast today i mentioned that harry potter pokemon go clone that did absolutely right. nothing did nothing did nothing and th that that's and that was what, like a decent idea what else are you what else you got like, right yeah it's gonna like have as good chances well, I mean, and it's like you know uh a hair, like he's like you know we want people to have a harry potter game where they live build work and play and it's like, okay, so you're talking about like maybe like a survival game, something along those lines. Sure, that can work. But the, uh, the reality is, is by the time you have that ready to go, we are going to be in a world where the, the, there are going to be even more power worlds. It's going to be even easier for a smaller studio out of nowhere to make those. And they're going to be, and there's going to be, they're going to be a dime a dozen. And you, you're going to have to stand out just because you have Harry Potter in it. Like, yeah, that, that's going to help to a certain degree. Sure. But if the game isn't as um, nimble and, and updated as fast as some of these things that are on Steam Early Access, you're just going to look old and outdated mm -hmm. and clumsy and and, uh, and and sort of like old media because you come from an old media company that can't keep up. I mean, part of the reason Hogwarts Legacy did so well is because it had been so long since there was a triple A Harry Potter game. That's specifically yes. what people were starving for. We've had Harry Potter mobile games. Like you're gonna just have a hard time getting anyone to care about that. Yeah, it's um, yeah, for real. And it's uh, especially if you're like the whole idea is to save money here, which I, I get. Like I get, I get that you can't make a big budget mobile game. That doesn't make a lot of sense. And also, even if it did, um, even if that's what people were asking for, it's it's still gonna come and go. Like that was that's their big thing here. It's like, hey, we we had the best selling game last year, Harry Potter, but people play it and then they're done. And it's like, yeah, man, but they give you like they give you a lot of money. <laughs> for that like they gave you way more money than actually most people spend on mobile I, games and and uh and I'd be like I, I get the, like the whales power mobile and all that stuff but and the, then just make another one in a few years or but like that's how so many products work how is this like an actually a problem it sounds like you're getting in your heads that because someone somewhere right. makes endless money from a game that if you're not doing that somehow you've messed up and it's like no that's the exception not everything can actually be that. Right. Like, God, like when I go and watch a movie, it's not like, ah, uh, only got to charge him that one time for the movie. I mean, right. Yeah, I guess Divix tried. And no, just, yeah, no movies do from? that. No movies can figure that out. No music has figured that out. Like Taylor Swift uh, sells you a T-shirt when you go to her concert. But even Taylor Swift's like not finding ways to monetize all this different stuff. Games have that to a certain extent. And like. A new Harry Potter game, you put out an expansion, you you can't you could definitely sell microtransactions to a certain extent in that stuff, and people would mostly accept it. Um, so you can get away with some of that. It's just you're not gonna be the endless game every time. Uh, especially if you're making something that that is as uh, as well received as that Harry Potter game was, because it, it people it was like what they wanted and it's it didn't have a lot of the bullshit in it, so they were happy to play it. Oh, yeah, it, I don't know. I just don't understand what, what any of them are talking about. And it's like, hey, this we have to make the, the next game people play forever. Well, people already have their play forever games. And if they do play your, your new one forever, well, then they're not going to play your new game. They're playing that one forever. Like, like the math just doesn't work out. They're, uh, they're all working themselves into a shoot. And it's what happened with yeah. Xbox during Xbox One, where, uh, you know, I, I, yeah. they were like, hey, we look at the way people play games and they are they're playing Destiny for 700 hours. Why would we try to make something that it, when they're already playing something on our system? Um, why would we try to make something to try to compete with that? That's really hard, especially if it's something they're just going to play for a weekend and, and not, not play anymore. It's like, so the thing you're learning from people playing a video game a lot is you shouldn't make video games. What are, what are you talking about here? And now everyone across the industry is having this revelation and, um, it is, they're going to pay and, and like, cause what, what's going to happen is the current executives are going to fail. 
and then a new a new group's going to come in and they're going to replace David Zasloff and all of his idiot friends at this company. And then they're going to be like, well, now here's a new strategy and maybe we will make video games. And it's just going to keep going back and forth. And that, I mean, and really, it, maybe at the end of the day, they're right for these big companies. Maybe these big companies can't make video games anymore. And, and it will ha- we, we will have to rely on, on a lot of smaller teams. And the good news is that that's getting easier every day to make a game. And so I'm not too worried about having stuff for me to play. Uh, but if they can't figure out a way to make it work for them, oh well. Next thing here, Jeff, Mario Day is coming up. That is uh, March 10th. There's been some the rumors. Suck, yeah, the Sunday, which is a little awkward. But there's been rumors circulating that maybe this is when we are going to see uh, some new trailers for Paper Mario, Thousand Year Door, and Luigi's 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 Mansion. Dying, everybody, <laughs> Luigi's Mansion Two. Uh, Jeff, how much do you believe all this stuff? I believe it. You know, so it's Pioro and they 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 they, they right. tend, tend to know what they're talking about. And um, it's it's you know circumstantially that there's reason to believe that this would make sense. Why not? Um, Nintendo does do stuff for for Mario Day every year now. These are both Mario related games. Yeah, uh, I think that we probably do get information about these games this week. Uh, I think we probably get it before Sunday. Um, or, but maybe they tease something and they drop some trailers on, on, on Sunday or something. I don't know. All right, Jeff, tell me when I see this thousand year door new trailer, how many frames per second are there going to be? Yeah, God, I'm just, I'm going to put, I'm going to put positivity out in the world. Mike, it will be, how could it be 30? It will be 60 frames per second. Again, I look, it was bullshit that it happened to Symphonia. At least there is an excuse. I don't think it's a great excuse, but there was a reason. There's yeah. just no reason for Nintendo to port a 60 FPS GameCube game to the Switch and have it run at half the frame rate. There's no reason. Maybe, maybe that's why they uh, really sued Yuzu. So, like, go get these emulation experts to come help them get this game to yeah. run right on, on the Switch. Uh, hey, did you see... Uh, this is a bit of a tangent. Did you see, like, that leaked footage of the Time Splitters game that was canceled? I, I've been meaning to check it out. I saw that it did leak. Someone, like, found a PS3 with, uh, a, a, like, it was a dev kit, and they saw the icon for Time Splitters 4 on there, and they bought it off of eBay for $500, thinking, hey, maybe I, maybe I can get this thing up and running. And apparently they were able to, and there's, like, five minutes of footage. Yeah, I mean, I, it, it is literally Fortnite. So I don't know when this build was, but I'm like, whoa, this is nobody would have liked this. <laughs> this would have been rough. Uh, gosh, I was just wondering if you had seen that, if you knew. If it is, is this wait, is, it, is, is this the time splitters from the dev kit or is this a different? Is this the one, the, the one that was just being oh, made? Man, I think you're talking about something completely different. No, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. No, something today. Something I think that very new one, that the last one that was canceled. Like footage of that leak. Wow. Today. Okay. So that that and would be different than the one that was found on like, the on the dead you know, kit. Everyone's really look. Like, me too. Like they they closed Free Radical and they shut down the Time Sports game. And look, like obviously they're doing a lot of shit over there at Embracer. Looking at this, and it's like, oh, <laughs> this is what the new Time Splitters was gonna. It was just their excuse to try to make their own Fortnite. Yeah. With like hopes and dreams. Mm. Oh, you gotta see. You have to look at this later, Jeff. It's I'll weird. look at it. Yeah, I'm kind of tracking it down right now. It's weird. Um, um, yeah, yeah. I'm looking at it. It's uh, wow. Yeah, that's uh, hey. I recognize that level at least, man. That's a time splitters level. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. Uh, any, any you okay? <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, yes. Yeah, so, <laughs> Mike has okay. gone bye bye, everybody. Oh, we did it. Uh, that's our first segment, everybody. It's about the news. Why don't we take a quick <laughs> break? Uh, maybe inject ourselves with something, and then we'll get back. We'll read these super chats. That sounds good to me. We are in the break. Mike, you want to you wanna, like freshen up to something? No, let's uh, go right back to it. All right, sounds good. Are you sure? All right. I don't know. I'm it's great. Your, it's your goddamn podcast. Oh, look That's at the right. things pop, like blow out of people just like Fortnite. Oh, my God. <laughs> I mean, they remain in Fortnite. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. <laughs> What is this? It's like, I don't get horny. I stay horny. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best soundbite on the board is what it is, That's Christian. Real good stuff. I don't know. Can we talk about the cock tent scene? <laughs> That's, that. That's just for me, everybody. Don't you worry your pretty little heads about that one. All right. Uh, can I bring us back in? Yep. All right, Jeff, we are back, and I am fully alert and present. Please read some Super Chats. 
Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, I was going to take some Tylenol cause I, 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 since the start of the show where I said I was feeling better. I don't feel better anymore all of a sudden. I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Jesus <laughs> Christ. Got a little bit, no. I got a little bit of a sore throat happening now. I'm like, gosh, oh, shit. Oh, my God. Stop trying to outdo me. I'm, <laughs> I'm sorry. You know, I just once. can't let you have all the empathy. Uh, I, I need some of that for me. I'm sad I missed um, Sting's last match. By the way, was that I heard it was pretty yeah, cool. It was real. It was cool. They did. A, they did a very good job. You know, they didn't overwork him, but they let him have some good pops, good moments, and then um, obviously Darby stole the show with going through the the uh, pain yeah. of glass. That was for. It was a good uh, pay per view uh, from top to bottom, though. It was a good time. I'll have to catch a replay of it. But yes, uh, super chats. Darachi says, "Working late tonight. Thanks for entertaining me." Yeah, of course, Darachi. Always appreciate appreciate you showing up and watching the show. Yes, thank you. Uh, L. Grug says, so does Mike just take pills without looking at them? Should we be concerned? Look, I, was like, I don't know what it was. I probably was already in a bit of a fog because I was sick. And I just was like, I was sitting here. I was like, okay, I should go take some DayQuil. Then I just started thinking about something else and was on autopilot, went into the bathroom, yeah. just like grabbed a bottle. I'm like, it's bottled. Like, just took it. And as soon as I took it, I was like, wait, that was the blue one. <laughs> right? Like, I shouldn't take the blue one right now. Oops. I've definitely... um. Been meaning to like, oh, I'm going to take my heartburn medicine. And I'm like, oh, no, I just took my stimulant for ADHD at 11 p.m. at night. Well, I guess I should buckle up for this night because I'm not sleeping. Go. So I've done that once Fun. before. Uh, John Cody says, been a while since I super chatted because I was on strike and unemployed. Puppeteers are sag. Uh, but still listening every week and still love the podcast. Things are looking up and I'm going to download this week or going to DL this week. And have oh Disneyland uh, this week hey. and have a dinner res at Club Thirty Three. Oh dang! I've never I've never ever been. That's um still on the bucket list. Club Thirty Three is is hard to get into. There's a giant wait list. You kind of have to know somebody who's already there to, to get you invited. Um, so that that's still something at some point I need to do is to get into Club Thirty Three and have that experience. Uh, and I'm I'm glad the strike is, is clearing up for you, John Cody, and things are, are coming back together. That is fantastic to hear. Uh, Uriel Delgado says, can we talk about how Lost Odyssey downfall was, or Lost Odyssey's downfall maybe, was caused by Square tricking people into thinking Final Fantasy XIII SAS PS3, well, was a PS3 exclusive. Um, Lost Odyssey is such a better game. Um, yes, yeah, yeah, 13 no. did come out on Xbox, but yeah, it definitely got heavily associated with PS3. Uh, then, I still really want to play Lost Odyssey. It's definitely on my backlog. I, the Lost Odyssey is now better than Final Fantasy 13. I'm sorry. This is just wrong. Uh, it probably Continue. is. Uh, I'm going to kill you. <laughs> John Cody says, has Mike ever been the rebel spy? No, but on this universal trip, they do a gag in, before the uh, Despicable Me ride where Gru scans everybody in the, the, the line waiting to go in. He says, uh, somebody hasn't showered. It's that those guys. And then the camera showed me and my brothers. So. <laughs> Fantastic. Thanks, Gru. Yeah, the um the, the greatest moment I ever had at a uh at a theme park was Dan Reichard getting picked on by the guy at Waterworld. Um, it just was the most perfect thing in the world because Dan was trying to get yeah. Abby to get like all of the, all the water dumped on her. And so the guy's like, well, there's my asshole right there. I will focus in on Dan. And then oh, Dan's yeah. getting hit point blank at range with a, a water gun to the face was really good. I love that Waterworld show. Um, I did a lot of great reds at Universal. I think my two favorite things were shows. One of them is like the oldest show at Universal, the uh, the horror makeup show, which is more almost more than anything an improv comedy show with the people doing it. It was very funny. They uh, made fun of me for being bald. It was great. A good time. But then the, a newer show, which I wasn't even like really looking forward to, and I was kind of mad at it because it replaced Terminator 2 3D. Uh, it's this born identity stunt show i've never seen Whoa, a horror movie fun oh uh, really it this thing rules it has it does like the thing where horror movies are good you would like them it's done in front of a very large screen but it's like a very high resolution high frame rate screen so like the, the people in the sets kind of just look like they're there but they have physical sets too but they'll do things like okay the actors are climbing on this physical tower that's in front of this screen but then the camera for like the video moves, but the screen moves with uh, the, the tower also moves in a way that's like Whoa. perfectly sync with it. It's 
crazy. It was a really, really good show. And I show I was uh, shocked how good it was. was it, I, that can't be that new. That's must have been it must have been around for a while now because it's born. No, you would. That's exactly what you would think, right? Yes. Like that's a newer thing. No, it is like a couple of years old. It's very new. Huh. Okay. We well, yeah, have like the technology sounds like very cutting edge. It's um, very. New. That's cool. Watch the born movies. At least the first three. I think you would really like. I them. would absolutely. I would like them. I don't know why I never saw them. Um, yeah. What's oh. the one that had um what's his face in it instead? Like Matt Damon's not in it. So. Uh, yeah, I had a uh, god. What is his name? He's the guy that got ran over oh, by his own uh, snowplow. Oh, yes, um, Hawkeye. Hawkeye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner. Jeremy Renner, yes. Jeremy Renner instead. Yeah. That's like the Born Legacy. Born. Okay, yeah, that makes yeah. sense. Yeah. Legacy. Makes sense you. He's not, that sounds that's correct. What? I can't believe that's the bad one. Everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see here. Where did I leave off? Uh, Jesse Sacken. Uh, time sure is a flat circle. Next year will be Mario's 40th anniversary already. Seems like that will be a good time for a new 3D Mario, eh? What other games, collections, yeah. events do you expect? I expect I expect them to come out and just state once and for all what is a mainline Mario. That's, that's, a, yeah, they'll that do that. Just, just shut us all. No, nah, because then, Nint- like, Nintendo... <sighs> They will do me dirty and will, they will say the Yoshi's Island thing, which again, at this point, that used to be my cross to die on. But then Dan's takes have gotten so weird that I'm right. just like, you got to like give him something. You can see that yeah. now. <laughs> Whatever. Who cares? You got to say Mario 3D World is a mainline game, you psychopath. I well, love that his argument with the Yoshi Island is always like, well, well, Miyamoto said so. It's like, what do you think Miyamoto would say about Mario 3D World? Yeah. <laughs> Crazy. <laughs> God, I can't wait to watch him play Superman 64 tomorrow. Uh, I don't it look, will be I just. I don't care how sick I am tomorrow. All right? They, they might they might have to wheel me into this office. <laughs> I'm going to sit here, who get is on this me? microphone, and watch and laugh. You know who they are. <laughs> Uh, I know. I know you won't miss it. I'm looking forward to it. Um, apparently, uh, apparently he's he's gotten in the get up already to send some footage to Jan. So I'm expecting some. Basically, yeah. don't don't miss it, everybody. The reveal yeah. tomorrow is going to be pretty good, especially if you are aware of a Nick Cage Superman. Um, <laughs> hey, damn! Let's let's do this one real quick. Chris Quinton dropping. Oh. A full Benjamin on us, uh, $100. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. We really appreciate it. I have never been more excited to hear you, but not see you as we all bask in the glory of Dan playing Superman. Amazing work, Mr. Mi Quan Chi. Uh, now, both of you, go give Dan hell. Oh, I promise uh, we will. It's going to be it's gonna be good. I, at least for this first episode, I'm going to do everything in my power to not be helpful at all. <laughs> <laughs> not, not even a bit. It's I'm just I, not going to care if he struggles. It is. Uh, God, I hope it's really miserable for him. Um, it's <laughs> man. I can't. I cannot wait. It's going to be a good time. Thank you again for that, Chris. Really appreciate Thank it. Thank you, Chris. Uh, all right. Big Fresh 37. I get that puzzle games are scary and intimidating, but I sincerely believe you guys can beat uh, <laughs> Captain Toad no matter how scared you may be. All right. Well, thank you for believing. I am pretty us. scared. That's, That's true. Right. Yes, I am a coward about this. Uh, Connell Woods says, fuck Zasloff and all the shareholders. Sounds good to me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's yeah. Like I mean, the, that's the Disney one. Or is that somebody else? No, that's Warner Brothers. That's Warner Brothers. That's right. It's Warner Brothers. Excuse me. Yeah. Um, that, 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 Zasloff really is like, uh, just makes my brain hurt when I think about him. Him and Elon Musk, these just complete fools oh, sure. that run things. Um, Burrito says weekly uh, Mortal Kombat mythologies take nothing. Good job. <laughs> I don't know what to do with myself now. I'll miss it, man. Or he says, I'll miss being your hype man excuse me there it is yeah Hello. i always appreciate it thank you to everybody who was along for that incredible trip. it's messed up jeff i think i kind of want to stream some more mythologies. it's uh, there's something to it i mean I, when i was when i was playing it when i had more time it was like man there's something here it's just like i really do just need to beat the game in one go to get on the uh the speed run yes board for it. that's all you have to do and you would now, be in the top 10 right like yeah, and I and I know that seems ridiculous, but like I do think it is a game that now that I know all of its bullshit, like that might not be too. I don't know. I want to at least stream it and see. Like, what is it like if I st- start mythologies now with everything I know? Like, I, I wouldn't be stuck at level two for seven hours again, or whatever that was, right? <laughs> yeah, I would like see how fast you can do the first two levels. If you can get yeah. those done, and, like, and feel good about it, and have a lot a lot of energy left over to get to through level three and beyond, I think you could do it pretty easily. 
Uh, Michael James says, any chance for a game mess? And what's good games crossover? I would love Andrea and Grub covering the news together. Yeah, that's a possibility. I'll see what Andrea's thinking. Although, I, yeah. I think she doesn't like me because John Drake likes me better. So, I mean, of course. Well, <laughs> I mean, she likes me fine, though, so don't worry. Yeah, there it is. Uh, yeah, we love Andrea. That'd be, uh, that'd be a lot of fun. Yes, absolutely. Uh, Dat Boy Jerry, if you all are sick, will Super Dan 64 get postponed? No, we'll, we will be there. Because all we got to do is just sit there and not even look pretty. Like, the cameras don't have to be on. I'll just, I'll just sit here and chug Dayquil, Nightquil, whatever. <laughs> Both at the same care. time. <laughs> I don't I'm think anything can it. stop that. Yeah, I don't think like like Chef can die. They want to roll his casket into the stream somehow, just for just to have fun. Exactly. That that's you know you got it completely right. Um, uh, uh Jez asked me to be on their uh, Xbox podcast, and R Randall Thor asked me to be on this week, and I'm like, what time? They're like 3 p.m. on Wednesday. I'm like, guys, I can't miss the thing I have at that time. I'm sorry, there's no way. Um, yeah. so yeah, gonna. Well, wait, when's the Microsoft thing tomorrow? later or no earlier okay. it's at 1 p.m okay Ooh. yeah Oof. we'll talk we'll, i'll talk over that but yeah um i don't hey we're all caught up on super chats uh, thanks again chris for that one higher that's where uh, the one i'm looking at right now i really really appreciate it appreciate it chris Th appreciate it everybody thank you so much we'll take another break we'll come back we got some uh questions from our uh discord community we'll get right to that right all right all right Back in right, again. Just go. Oh, we're right. Never mind. This yep. time we're done. <laughs> oh. oh, thank you, Sean. Sean on point. He made the, the trip today and then he locked us. That's fucking. On top of things. I do what I do. Yeah. All <laughs> while Shit. editing two shows. Oh, oh damn. Shit, bro. So, what are, okay. Man, oh, my new favorite production story is that Jan went out to a local taco truck and hooked up to their <laughs> wi-fi to give me his audio today what really i mean he's it, it really has been broken yeah. for him all day i didn't know it was that broken gorilla, yeah fucking gorilla production over here like <laughs> i was like you know this how, is how they did yeah 28 days later they, they film it on the middle of the night so they wouldn't like yeah, get called by thing. the police same, same shit thing. <laughs> uh, at least he does have an abundance of taco trucks because he's in SF. So they're they're, they're everywhere. They're every corner, and they're really delicious. It's a pandemic. It's, pandemic, it's a pa pandemic. Yes, exactly. Uh, oh boy, man. I hope this time all kicks in. Kid, the kiddos both boy. have ear infections, and it's like so bad oh, they had to get X rays and yeah. stuff. Yeah, it's like oh man, what what is going uh -huh. on over here? What's going on? What's, yeah. Uh... Oh, the boys is uh oh prime video june 13 the boys tv premieres let's go or i don't th i don't know it's just it should say it's june 13 at the boys so uh, that's what i'm assuming yeah i don't know they probably wouldn't put a date if it wasn't the show right i mean because people would be like assuming it's the show yeah i don't know i mean this uh i, I did this thing on this Mario oh, yeah, yeah, Day perfect. video on, on Nintendo's YouTube page. Can't believe how commercialized Mario Day has become. And I'm so surprised how many people think I'm serious. <laughs> like, so, that. so yeah, many I'm people funny. are like, oh, uh, just... what, what do you expect? They're a business. <laughs> guys, guys, come on, please. Welcome to the internet, Jeff. I know. I'm like, please. <laughs> I love that. What, what, what do you say at the, the response? Um, something about the, the muscles? Yeah, yeah. They're, they're, they're just like, <laughs> oh, yeah. Like, well, what would you what would you have done? So I'll, I'll give Mario big muscles. <laughs> 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 I, I wonder if he'll get it now, but probably no, still not. No. no, absolutely not. Oh, Profoundly unfunny people. I'm glad that all the cool Nintendo fans are here listening to this show right now. Yeah. That's that's what mm -hmm. it is. We got the we got the good ones. Yeah, we got the good ones. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I've been playing. Uh, I've been playing uh, expeditions all day. Uh, and that oh, game, that game. Oh, you me that thing. Yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I dude. asked you for that thing. You um, gave me that thing. I don't think I, I look at. I got Nikki that thing. Nikki asked uh, early on. Nikki, and, Nikki, did they like that? I didn't. They I like. They Nikki were in it. Slack. They asking, were the first one talking about. Yes. It, and so I was like, all right, Nikki, I, I got your back right. here. We got another per. Another mud pervert. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, and so I I got that. Then I'm, there's a whole bunch of other codes coming right. in now. It's it is going to pick back up immediately. Apparently. Oh, uh, uh, speaking of uh, 
Jan insisted. I had to honor his request, you know, from beyond the grave, RIP, uh, that <laughs> Giant Bombcast 830 be named Muddy Buddies. So, oh, Muddy fun. Buddy. All right. Yeah, well, big old expedition. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You're so fun. You make the muddies all so fun. <laughs> Muddy Buddy. <laughs> I cut the ending of that podcast. You didn't talk about you didn't talk about Dune during that podcast, didn't you? Yeah, because it's a podcast. video game podcast. <laughs> God. Is it? My God. Yeah, they, I just, that's true. I, they never I, talk I, about other stuff. I, 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 I always laugh. Uh, no, look, you're yeah, sure. I know what you mean, but I always laugh. Yeah, There's certain I, movies and TV shows where it's like all the video game people are sort of like, well, we're just going to talk <laughs> about this. And it was Game of Thrones for TV. Now Dune's for movies. It's like, yeah, we'll oh, just yeah. write reviews for Dune on our video game sites. Why not? Yeah, it feels like the the Why tubes out of the deja tube. vu. <laughs> well, he he, he <laughs> gave us this. That was before we were on the air, right? So he's, he's doing yeah, this I for the people. This. I'm saying yeah, this. Yeah, I'm yeah. yeah. talking to you, Sean. I'm talking <laughs> to you. All right, bring us back in, Mike. Yeah, that's it. Uh, podcast, Jeff, we're back. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> we got I'm questions like, from the Discord community. I'm gonna try to read these. We'll see how that yeah, goes. I'm, I'm, I got, my, let me get it up too. I'll be back. Yeah, I'll if you need it. tag you in here. At yep, some sounds point. good. We'll see. Where's these? Where's the glasses I didn't leave on the airplane? Here they are. <laughs> All right. I said, yeah, I like called them. So like, hey, can I get my glasses? Like, you have to fill out a form. I was like, oh, great. So they're never <laughs> going to see those again or see them in, like, butts. Fantastic. Atomic Juice says, dear Mike, can you trust a snore -serer? Some You can't trust. Okay, let me try this again. <laughs> I can take over on number one dear here. Dear Mike, you can trust a snore -serer sometimes. Mick Yonchi and also Jeff. Fair. Can you give me a clean read of you saying it's morally okay to pirate Nintendo games so I can clip it and share it online? I'll let Jeff, I'll let you handle that one. You just did. <laughs> it was that was pretty clean. All right, yeah, so. it's it's morally okay to pirate Nintendo games, I I suppose. I'm trying oh, to shit. get out of jail. I'm trying to get out of there. Oh, we're never getting out of there. Dick Turbo says, Should I be worried Embracer will shut down Purple Lamp Studio, who made the modern SpongeBob games I enjoyed, if the epic Mickey remaster does not do well. I mean, like every studio in Bricks is always in some like fear of being uh, shut down. But I feel like that Epic Mickey Remaster is going to do pretty well. As long as their expectations are reasonable for what it can do. Like I was surprised how many people told me they were excited about for that game and how Epic Mickey was something that they cared about. So And I bet I bet this is gonna be a fun version of that. Like I bet they will fix up enough that would be like, oh yeah, this is better than I remember. Probably because it will be. Ben JC says, how are babies made? Fucking uh, Jamie H1224 says, let me believe this is the case. Nintendo are going to use the Citrus source code for the Switch 2's gimmick, wireless connectivity to a TV. Using the Switch as the bottom screen and the TV as the top, 3DS is emulation is coming to NSO, right? We'll no. let you believe whatever you want. <laughs> Laura says, now that Toys for Bob is out of the Activision grasp, if they were able to make a new Nintendo game, which franchise would you like to work on? I guess I never consider that. I guess Nintendo could just license a property. Yeah, to Nintendo them now, says huh? they want to work with more studios like that on yeah. on their stuff. So, yeah, I don't know. Um, I, I mean, know. You, uh, let that make a Yoshi game. Let's uh, let's make a 3D Yoshi game finally, and let that them make would be it. A re that's a really good fit. That would be fun. Haas says, hey, yo, dog, Jeff, why the hell are you here doing a podcast and not instead ignoring Mike by playing Expeditions, a Mudrunner game? Oh, I am. I got the Steam Deck right here. I'm playing it. Don't worry. Fantastic. I want to I need I do want to check that out. Get me a code, Jeff. Uh, okay. I can get my own codes, but I want you to do it. Sure. Eden's censored Final Fantasy VII innuendo. By the way, I'm very, I'm very amused, maybe grateful. Maybe it's just because not enough people have beaten the game yet. But I assume that the obnoxious conversation that people were going to get mad about Final Fantasy VII Rebirth would be the ending, and instead it's about Chadley. So, <laughs> whatever. It's Chadley, and now it's and and now it's like people just trying to figure out if the side quests are are filler or not. There's been a lot of that. Yeah, I guess. Um, yeah, you were talking about that today, and I'm like, I, I'm I'm always a little surprised by that because I don't know. I, I really like the side quests, but again, to me, the side quests were just playing the game, and I right. really like the game. I think that people who don't like the side side quests a lot. Maybe just don't like the game as much. Maybe that's being reductive. I don't know. You know, I, I I watch bits and pieces of it, but how did you find Final Fantasy VII Rebirth when you played a bunch of it for the site? Uh, I found it to be uh, impressive in a lot of ways, but I'm still, I feel like I have no grasp on it yet because uh, it's like so, there's so much happening and I feel like I'm, I would go from one thing to the next to the next and the combat would add more stuff and, and you know, and like 
Tam and Chone were, were helpful, but they also like, like, try this, try this, try this. And I'm like, thank you, this is cool. But I'm like, now I'm like trying more things than I think I would have in a natural play. So it's like, there are so many options available to me that I, I, I just felt overwhelmed at the end. And I, I, what I want, but I, the reason I rushed through Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth over the weekend is I want to get that finished so I can rush back and play more Final Fantasy. So that's where I'm at. I really think what you should do is go and do a lot of that open world content. That's, that is the uh, plan. That's, that's, what, would, that's what I'm doing. A lot of that is just combat and just going to give you more more time to get familiar with that combat system exactly. and with that's the characters. The and you'll level up and you'll get new materia and all this other stuff. So, yeah. Uh, but anyways, Eden says, dogs, I'm debating going back to school for fashion design. And there's three world-renowned universities for it in Ohio. Is a world-class education worth living in Ohio for four years? Mm. Hey, I love Ohio. Yeah, <laughs> I, like, I, like, I like living here a lot. Yeah. I've only ever lived here, though, so I don't, what do I know? Yep. I mean, listen, uh, you, you don't have to stay here. Uh, and you could always be like, I left Ohio if you do leave in the end. So, there, yeah, you'll, you'll, you'll be fine. Go for it. Joyzy says, hello, Mike. Need you to know it's Star Wars Dark Forces 4, Jedi Knight 3, Jedi Akas 2, Jedi Academy Minotti, and Jeff, more of a Dash Rendar guy. Grub. I was <laughs> happy you brought that up, by the way. Uh-huh, uh, of course. Can you, can, you, can you order some wine from Kyle Katarn's winery and review it? What? What? I mean, if, real. if this is a thing I could do, I absolutely will do this it. Some, this is like, does he actually like own a winery? Is this what this is about? Like the guy oh, who played cool. Kyle? Let me look this up. I got, I have gotten gimmick wines before. I got Jericho's Champagne when that was a thing, Chris Jericho's. And I got that Chateau Picard in the first season of Captain Picard. I found out the guy who played Kyle Katarn is look now a winemaker. Yeah. Good for him. Evidence Wines. That is Kyle Katarn. Jason Court, the winemaker. Yeah, you, you could uh, like look, just look at him. You could see it immediately. Like he did. Yeah, sure, he's aged, but it still has that same smile. That's cool. Purchase wine. Okay. Oh, this is a fancy, this is a nice looking bottle. But I'm a little pricey, of course. You know, 90 bucks here for the 2017 Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, but it does uh, <laughs> it does look nice. Excuse me? So, Cabernet Sauvignon. He's sick. Let, okay. him just, let him just say what he's That's saying. That's how you say Cabernet Sauvignon. That's fine. Sauvignon. Podcast! <laughs> 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 It's right, get stuck in some right Cabernet Sauvignon. Uh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Next uh, thing that people type into their computers is from <laughs> Jedi Moss Four. Yeah, oh, no, oh, wait, wait, Cody's right. We should do it. We'll do a tasting with Mahardi sometime. That'd be fun. <laughs> uh, um, March is, of course, the month of two important milestones. The Switch just turned seven years old. God, and we all have the important national holiday that is March 10th, Mario Day. What uh, what are, at this point, your top five Switch games as we reach the end of the Switch era? Yeah, without thinking about it too hard, Jeff, just kind of go with your gut. Top five Switch games. Well, three of them are easy. It's, you know, it's Super Mario Odyssey and the, both the Zelda games. So if I'm not right, thinking about I, it too hard, that, that's pretty easy. Yeah, I think I agree with you there. And then Smash Brothers for me. And I, like, I, I, Pikmin. I, uh, yeah, oh, yeah, Pikmin 4 is in there. Like, Pikmin 4, Luigi's Mansion 3. Was very good. I feel like, but it gets a little weirder because I'm like, it's like, well, Hades was a Switch game for me. Hades yeah, very true. easily. Uh, Met Metroid Dread. Ooh, Maybe I'll say Metroid Dread. Dread. Yeah, Metroid Dread probably for me Brothers, too. Metroid, yeah, I'll pay, probably say Metroid Dread, Smash Brothers, and the two Zelda games and Mario Odyssey for now. Um, I think as at some point, Jeff, th that this year or whatever we kind of feel like we're, we're sort of done with the big Switch releases, we should on this show. Just work together and do a whole episode. That's just us coming up with the 100 best Switch games. I think that's a great idea. 100. So something to look forward to. Um, Casual says, Dear Jeff, Pinky's out for Espresso Tuesday. Grub and Mike, get in, user. You zoo-er. We're going shopping. <laughs> Minotti, I like it. Which Nintendo game would you give the Final Fantasy VII Remake Trilogy treatment to? Yeah, that's interesting. You know, um, it's another thing, Jeff. And I, you know, uh, I think there's probably more people on, on my side of this where, but there's some people like, I don't like how they're putting so much filler in Final Fantasy seven. Um, that I think there's just as many as people, if not more that really like yeah, seeing definitely. it expanded, seeing new characters. I also, I wrote a tweet about, there's like this asshole guy on a motorcycle from the first game. And he's a new character in the remake trilogy. And when I first saw him, I was like, Oh, what? this is a uh, filler. This is weird. And then as soon as he showed up again in rebirth, I was like, hell yeah, this guy. <laughs> and I had like some people be like, that's, a, that's the same exact arc that I went through. So I like getting all these new characters and so much um, expanded stuff for the existing characters. Um, 
gosh, it, like Link to the Past was the first thing that came to my mind. It may be interesting to see that uh, expanded in a way that feels like a new game, but obviously still like top down 16 bit Link to the Past will always be there. And 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 that's good too. Uh, how about you? I mean, I do, I do frequently think how cool it would be if instead of getting the Final Fantasy VII remakes, not really instead, but instead we got Final Fantasy VI because like I want to see this game, but where you suplex a train and uh, those cool mechs. Yeah, but they asked what Nintendo game. Uh, yeah, I, I, but just saying that that's what I think about a lot. If it's a Nintendo game, um, it well, I, the, this is a Nintendo sixty four game. Uh, Shadow of the Empire is one I think about a lot. But yeah, I mean, those are ah, that would be amazing, actually. Yeah, yeah, I, I do. I think about that constantly where I'm like, that would be a good one because there's so much like good stuff in there. Uh, it's just not executed really well in a lot of those stages. Uh, but yeah, if it's like a Nintendo Nintendo game, those early 2D Zelda games, all any of those would be fantastic to expand like this. Freedom McLiberty Ball asks, will, uh, will Wind Waker and Twilight Princess be switched to launch games? I mean, who knows, Jeff? I would almost more expect them to be kind of like the holiday filler games here as we need to release something for a normal Switch until the, you know, since, since we don't have much coming out, since everything got it moved back a bit, right? Yep, I would, I mean, I don't know what they're doing if those games don't, if, if we're waiting until next year to get a Switch 2 and you need something for this holiday, uh, I would complain a little bit less if we got these. Dr. Ryan says, what's the dumbest thing you're proud of? For example, I'm the first image result. If you Google search Asiago face, <laughs> PS Grub, can I DM you a return to work slip for damn tomorrow to book in the hurt thingy chapter? That'd be incredible. Yeah, yeah. Get me on Twitter. Uh, absolutely. Yeah. Or, or, uh, or Discord, un- whatever's easier for you. I guess I'm unreasonably proud of beating uh, freaking... Mortal Kombat Mythology Sub Zero. I don't know if there's anything to be proud of, but yet that's how I feel. Yeah, uh, Bubsy 3D is def- definitely a similar thing for me, where it's like I never thought I would actually beat that game. So um, that probably is the dumbest thing to be proud of. I do have a uh, that framed um, Jeff Grubb completed a goal thing from like second grade or something around here somewhere. Nice. And that, that's a pretty dumb thing. I'm not really proud of it because I don't remember what the goal was, but I, I don't know. I still take pride in it. Are, are, how do you feel? Is pride the word for being largely responsible for the cuphead situation? Uh, sometimes it's pride. Yeah, <laughs> it's like wow, look at this impact I had. Yeah, stubborn it pride. Was a good one. But yeah, I have that power. Exactly. Mister Bowler says there was a time from the mid '80s, early '90s when, in the wake of Muppet Babies, we got baby and child versions of famous cartoon characters, including Scooby Doo. Uh, Flintstones and Tom and Jerry. I remember like many fads has burned fast and bright, but there's no reason we can't bring it back for video games. We already had baby versions of Mario characters and kid Bayonetta. So what other Nintendo characters should get the baby, the Muppet babies treatment? Um, I like this question a lot. Uh, I think we should get a Fire Emblem game with like one of the casts, but they're all babies. We did get Baby Metroid, right? Isn't that a whole thing where she says "baby" a lot or the baby? Well, like, but Samus isn't a baby. He's just she. Had, there's a. Oh, then give me Baby, baby Samus. Camera. There we go. Fighting no, Baby Samus. Fighting, fighting Baby Metroids. Yeah. Isn't Samus a baby when her parents are brutally murdered by Ridley? Yeah, that'd be cool too. That'd be fun too. Villain Max is in honor of Sting's last match. What would you want to play or do for your last stream or? podcast um gosh yeah that's interesting the last last stream i probably just want to play Mega Man 3 my favorite game the last podcast i would want it to do it with jeff and while well, well, sick and having earlier that day taking night quill yeah sorry mike fine. you're Wait, dying well, I, I <laughs> to tell you. <laughs> no it's just now uh you know what i would want to talk i want to yeah i would just want to do a podcast with jeff i would want to, want to talk about whatever the news is and then do some stump dumb stupid deciding game at the end so yeah, there you go anyone could be the last one <laughs> you don't know yeah same uh for, for my last thing i probably would uh play something like bubsy again Brightfish says, okay, but seriously, who's leaking all those Switch games? For some reason, we got Dan Shoe written out here. The, <laughs> I don't think funny. it's Dan. Don't Probably it's not Shoe. Dan. Uh, it is... I mean, it's I, I, people think it's like someone at Nintendo or someone close to Nintendo, and it's probably just someone in the supply chain uh, Like as things are getting shipped out to stores, because you know, it takes weeks to get things to stores around the world. Someone early on in the supply chain could just hand it to a buddy who does all the dirty work. Uh, that's my assumption. Laser Wolf says, hello, Jeff, tier two leaker grub and Mike nostalgic for Kmart Minotti. 
I bought Palacho four times already. Do I have a problem or does everyone but one who hasn't bought it have a problem? Both are true. I, I did have a bit of an urge to buy it on Switch and I'm like, yeah, I could just download it onto my Roger Ally if I want to do it. I still I have been playing a lot. Here's something I'm proud of. Let me know if you think this is a swag move. As I, when I was waiting for uh, my father was picking us all up to go to the airport for the trip, I was in the middle of a Bellatro run. So he picked us up. I just like stopped playing Bellatro. When as soon as I got home, went on my computer, resumed that run and beat it. That's pretty cool. That's, See, there yeah. you go. Because I mean, you get, there's like nuances to a run that you got to remember how to because you got to take advantage of every uh, of everything that you have going. So to remember right. that, that's pretty impressive. I, I, I also got a run, I think, today where I was finally I got like some hands that were like in the millions chip wise. So mm -hmm. Yeah, like, finally getting some silly stuff good. to happen. Oh, it's good. It's good stuff. Yeah, uh, I bought it twice, even though I got it for free the first time. <laughs> I uh, I think I got the code for Switch, too. So I just use both. I have both codes. Um, I'm nostalgic for Kmart as well, by the way. Yeah, I mean, look, I'd, trust me, it's completely unearned. But sometimes you're just nostalgic for things because they were things you did when you were a child that aren't around anymore. Yep. It happens. The Christmas Fruity Pebbles commercial. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's also that's also in the cuck tint video. Holy shit. Yes, I love that video. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's the season of sharing. <laughs> oh, hell yeah. I should have known God. that was really going to pop, Mike. That really fucked me. Up. <laughs> what is he like? Like front, like Barney's like on the roof just to sin. He like sings something. That right. Yeah. I think they're, are they like decorating? I think yeah. Well, yeah. Well, Bar Fred's decorating, and then Santa actually comes. Right. But, like Barney's plan was to pretend to be Santa to get the pebbles, but Santa was already there. So and and Fred's about to admonish Barney for this, but then Santa's like, "Come on, dude, it's Christmas." So he just. <laughs> 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 I'm gonna cry. <laughs> <laughs> we oh, used to so be a country. <laughs> I'm sorry. There, there was everyone. There's a couple seconds of it. <laughs> <laughs> hey, buddy says like, like oh, I'm gonna get Fred's fruity pebbles. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the fucking Flintstones. <laughs> these, uh, these have a. Oh man, you're back. You're gonna be back to think about the Flintstones every day again because yeah, of this. I kind of got, got, got over it, and now I'm back. He's baby. 100 percent back, everybody. Oh, I need Flintstones content. Um. What was that? Uh, here we go. Here's <laughs> Velocity Prime says, Happy Tuesday, my dogs. With Dune 2 sweeping theaters at the moment and a rash of okay. Dune tie-ins and games being announced, what blockbuster movie franchise or best-selling book series do you most want to see brought to the Game Sphere next? Bonus points for dev choice. I want. I just want um, Night Dive to remaster that Will of Time first-person shooter that came out in the early 2000s that nobody <laughs> but me remembers. Whenever I bring that, people are like, what are you talking about? I'm like, no, that was a real, that is a thing. It's Yeah, it, it's just hard to think because, like, those books, uh, because the series was, like, unfinished and has continued, it feels like it's relatively recent, but it's like, no, they've been going on for a very long time. Um right. For for me, it probably it would probably be The Martian. Uh, that that oh, I like that yeah. book. I like that movie, yeah. and I think it would make a very good video game. I, I remember like the, when it first came out, people liked it. But I also remember a lot of people kind of giving me like funny faces for liking it so much. I feel like now the book or the movie Martian, or both, both, uh, mostly the movie though. Now it seems like it's pretty universally well liked. Yeah, I mean because it, it's really it's a really well made movie. They he it's just, a fun. Movie. He nailed it. Yes, but look. I like the space movies that are also like very like kind of serious and scary and whatnot, but there's something about the, the you know, there's obviously danger in the Martian, but it's also kind of a lot of fun. Right. It's a, yeah. Whatnot. It's like, um, like the, the, those Nickelodeon Mr. Science shows or whatever. It's like that guy got stuck on Mars and so he made it fun. And it's like, that's pretty cool. Wolf up to my dog says a Bapa, Bapa Tro. Gotcha. So what happens to the emulator that rhymes with PU stinks? What do you think? There's, and do you think Tears of the Kingdom was also the breaking point for Nintendo to finally prevent hardware vulnerabilities as reliably as Microsoft and Sony? Thanks as always. Um, I think that uh, PU stinks probably continues mostly unaffected. Um, I think that Nintendo will will feel like what it's done here will have the effect it intended to have, um, and it doesn't have as easy of a case to take out PU stinks. Um, and then. Was Tears of the Kingdom was the breaking point for Nintendo to finally prevent hardware vulnerabilities as reliably as Microsoft and Sony? I'm not sure exactly what, what you mean, Bob Petro. Uh, well, I think it means I mean, Sony and Microsoft don't, their hardware usually isn't cracked as easily as Nintendo's, right? Yeah, of, yeah, for sure. Right? But if it's, um, you know, a big, you think that, but a big part, like, you know, the Xbox has a dev 
kit mode, like that you could pay 20 bucks for. So if someone's trying to crack that thing open to do cool stuff on, well, it's like if you if your interests actually are homebrew and all these other things that a lot of times actually is where some of the stuff starts, uh, you just pay the $20 and you turn it into a dev kit and then you could do that. So that's a pretty good way of preventing it. Um, and then the PlayStation Sony actually is very good at, at this stuff these days. So can I uh, back this one up a little bit? Yeah, though? please. Yeah, because I'm, I'm still not exactly sure what, what he's asking. Well, what, what he's getting at is like uh, something. I, I think there might be some missing information here because Nintendo security actually is very, very good. The thing is, launch switches are how these things get dumped. Like they fix those vulnerabilities right, with yeah. later switches. That's good. Point. And so Bob was kind of asking, like, do they up their security? Because Tears of the Kingdom was a, you know, one million copy wake up call. They actually already did. That it's was the, that was the enhanced battery switch. one. Yeah. Right. But because every switch going back to the launch one can play these new games coming out, those launch exploited ones are the reason that we get these games leaking out early. So the problem has already been fixed and it probably will be going into the switch, too. Yes, they they'll definitely have a lot of that stuff carry over to the switch too, and have new ways of dealing with it. And, uh, you know, I, I think that I still think that the, some of the stuff, what we saw with this was, uh, inspired somewhat by them moving the switch to release and being like, ah, let's just go ahead and fight this since we have one more holiday with the switch. Jeff, we got another big super chat from Chris. Do you want to read that? Yeah. Chris dropping another hundo. Thank you so much, Chris. Jeez. You, Chris. It says, I know it's asking you two to do extra work. Uh, hey, listen, you're fine. You can ask us to do extra work, but if Dan is Superman, can you two be Lex Luthor and, and Bizarro Superman? Just give him bad advice and tell him how much he is failing all the innocent people. It's not far off from what you'll be doing <laughs> anyways. Thanks. Oh, I'll definitely be doing that. I'm definitely okay. It'll, it'll be more of a Photoshop situation. I'm not dressing up. I'm on break this time, darn it. Uh, I guess I, He's I mean, already dressed what, like Lex Luthor. Yeah, I basically I'm already am Lex Luger, Luger. <laughs> <laughs> Luger. I'm gonna put, gonna put Dan into a torture rack for America. Uh, it was nice. It was cute seeing how happy Lex Luger was being at Sting's last match, by the way. Uh, yeah, I, I like Lex Luger despite what he, well, he's a wrestler. Of course, he's done some bad stuff. Um, thank you so much, Chris. All right, uh, JD Camp asked, well, uh, favorite state fair slash theme park food abomination. Also, you should go to the Minnesota State Fair. It's it's fine. Those things are kind of different to me, although the theme park, I love the corn dog in Disneyland. Uh, I don't know if you call that abomination, but no, we're talking about like the, deep fried butter and stuff, right? Like at the state fair, like it is similar and yet way more criminal is the like fried cheese. They just get a block of cheese. And put that in the same batter as the corn dogs, and just fry that and put it on a stick. That's what I like. It just is. It does just feel like I'm eating lard at that point or something. But yeah, it tastes good. I've not like tried too many of these things, and if I have, I, I I forget. But I like not against it. I would I would definitely try the deep fried stick of butter, whatever. Um, I don't. But it's it's I, not too much. I, it's not appealing to me. I will say I would try it. It's not something I'm like seeking out, which is why I haven't tried it so far. I will say even back like when I was like in my twenties and I could just eat anything. I didn't really care about it. I had a deep fried Oreo once, like even at that time in my life, <laughs> and it was me. I was like, that's way too much. Yeah, this it's, is it's, ridiculous. It seems like a lot. Yeah. Like I have a future to worry about. <laughs> like what's going on here? <laughs> Uh, Tommy Pencil says, Jeff, if Dan Campbell is the NFL's Ichiban Kasuga, who is the NFL's Kazuma Kiryu? Who is their Nanba? Um, Kazuma Kiryu in the NFL probably would be like Mike Vrabel or something where it's um, he has. There is a similar sort of backbone to what uh, Ichiban or what Dan Campbell is a uh, Kasuga. Uh, but he is much more serious and sort of um, scary. So, yeah, I think Mike Vrabel. Then he continues, Mike, you ever eat at restaurants outside of theme parks when you're in Orlando? The local food and brewery scene in Orlando is fantastic. No, not, not really. Um, like, like, I feel bad, but I, like, I want the theme park stuff. It's just fun to me. And, you know, it's like what all the other theme park people are talking about. So if I want to go somewhere new, I want to go to this place that I've heard about from all the theme park videos. And then, like, add it to my kind of knowledge base, so then I can talk about, have opinion on. Like, that's kind of, kind of the gotta catch them all mechanic of. And then there's the ones I've just been to before, and I want to go back. Um, so I'm sorry, Tommy. I'm sure, I'm sure you're right, but I just, I just like being in those theme parks. I just like theme parks a lot. 
uh, Beefhammer asks, Jeff, why do you think there are people who constantly want to get on you anytime you're wrong, but they let others like Dan, Sean, and Mike get away with being <laughs> wrong all the time? I'm never wrong. I don't know. Two dimes, champ, Do Beefhammer. You're really onto something here. You got to, you make what some good fuck, points. Beef? Make some very good Dan, points. I don't think people let Dan get away with it. No, they don't. Give them a, people give him too much shit. Uh, but yes, thank you. Beefhammer but Slate but says, the real answer is it's my smug face. Yeah, you just aren't, you're just not a likable person. You're just not a likable person with this stupid <laughs> smug face. Slate says, dear, dear Mike, over the shoulder, boulder, holder, Minotti, and Jeff, under the butt, nut, hunt, grub. <laughs> when will Smash Brothers at Tifa? What other Nintendo games would you like to see Tifa in? Look, I mean, look, I wouldn't hate it, but we sure do already have two Final Fantasy VII characters. Yeah. In uh, Smash Brothers, if, like, if there you know, was if there was another Final Fantasy character from another Final Fantasy, who would be next? That's a good question. I mean, to be clear, Tifa is more popular than any of them. <laughs> I mean, I would most like it to be Vivi. Sure. Uh, from it's nine. Be uh, I don't think it'll be Lightning. Look, you and your all about Final Fantasy thirteen again today. Uh, I don't think it'll be Lightning. Lightning. Lightning was never as popular as they wanted her to be then when they were pushing her hard, let alone now when we're kind it's of well past it. Yeah, sure. Um, that Terra, maybe. Um, I, I just don't think there will be any more. No, no, there, uh, there will be. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, Square Enix should make a new fighting game with Final Fantasy characters. And like, I don't mind them. Though. I don't mind them being uh, ambitious about it, but uh, I, I kind of would like for it to be a smidge less convoluted than the Dissidia games. Chaos Buckaroo says, howdy, fellas. Pokemon Legends Game Mess just got announced. What point in time and space are you guys getting sent to? Well, the 80s. Yeah. Uh, and I mean, I guess, you know, well, Cleveland, Ohio. I <laughs> like, welcome to Cleveland, Ohio in the 80s. Which, which is weird because like, Pokemon Legends is about like that world getting built up in the 80s is when actually when the United States got completely broken down. So it'll yeah, be right. a little bit different. But yeah, he's right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Weisman says, hey, yo, dogs. Recently, Ben Hansen did an interview with some of the fellows from the old One Up show. Oh, yeah. So you can do a podcast today with someone from a podcast you used to listen to. Who would it be? I mean, we talk a lot about One Up yours, which is pretty Jason, but I'd love to get a- at least those first four original uh, members in that maybe together for a reunion someday if that's something within my power. Yep. Uh, That'd be know. fun. Yeah. I should uh, maybe try to make that happen for the GV at night over Summer Games. So it's okay. probably, probably be difficult because. I did uh, last year. I did ask Garnet. He's like, I don't get back to the United States all that often. He's out. In, he lives yeah. out in Europe now. So, yeah, that'd Maybe be that'd be really cool. Would be more possible. Who knows? Yep. Uh, Weisman says, "Hey, yo, dogs." Recently, oh, that's the one I read. Evil Jana says, "If Sony had <coughs> control of Nintendo IP, how many franchises would they bury, and which one would become the over-the-shoulder narrative gaming event? They would turn Metroid into that somehow. Yeah, wow. Uh, and then like everything but." Mario and Zelda, maybe Splatoon would just kind of be gone. There'd be no Pikmin. No. God. I, I, I'm, pr- I'm pretty excited about these rumors of the uh, Gravity Rush 2 remaster, although I wish they would do the first one also. Uh, but hey, more Gravity Rush, I'll take it. Even if it is piggybacking off that oddly live action movie that they're making. Right, that's, I. Uh, yeah, I said they were like, hey, I think they're making anime it. And you're I, wrong. I was wrong, yeah, are. but it's also because I don't give a shit. Um, but, <laughs> <laughs> but it was very weird to see people like, no, that's live action. I'm like, really? Why would they do that? It's a good question. It's the most that should be animated property that I could possibly imagine. It's like, we're going to make an Ape Escape movie, a live action one. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> like Jack and Dex like, no, that's not right. Yeah, Ape Escape should just be a kid's show on like oh, the well, kids WB. It, absolutely. Always be clothing says, Dear Jeff, Dan, your next grub, and Mike, Dan, I swear to God, your next Minotti. <laughs> How excited are you for Dan to gear up for Bike Club and be forced to wear the costume at Pexy? Yeah, I want to be clear. I'm not, I'm not dressing up as shit at this Pax. I'm not bringing any wacky costumes or makeup or anything. I know I was Robocop last time. Don't expect me to come out as Mike McClunchy. It's not happening. This isn't a work. This is a shoot. I'm not dressing up. Unless you guys were like, we would really like it, Mike. You're so cool and famous. No, if you bring no. Mike McQuanchi, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna be wearing that makeup around packs all day, even though it wouldn't <laughs> be a problem. Every a lot of people wear makeup, but no, I don't <laughs> want to. 
Uh, uh, Lanny Kudik Denver says, hey, Mike, I am free of Mortal Kombat Mythologies, Minotti, and Jeff. I don't remember anything that happened last week, Grub. Correct. So, so apparently in the month of February alone, Genshin Impact made $89.8 million. And Honkai Star Rail made $85.8 million. Huh. Holy shit. The question is, how shitty will the Ubisoft gotcha game be? And how many A's <laughs> will it have? <laughs> yeah, Jeff, let him. What what happened here? Um, is, is this being reductive? This is my word of the day, I guess. Uh, of the situation. Why does it seem like um Eastern games are doing a lot better than Western games once again? Uh, well, I mean, big part of it is that they they just kept making games and didn't like like lose sight of some of that stuff. But you know, also they 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 have stuff that appeals to wide audiences. Um, in terms of. People like characters that are inspired by anime. They like their waifus. They um, like their gotcha stuff, apparently. They like uh, stuff that has uh, deep lore and, and all this stuff. And, and, and then these games are, are aping of familiar... Like, the uh, uh, which one is it? The train one, Honkai Star Rail? That one's, like, pretty close to a lot of, like, uh, turn-based RPGs that people really like. And Genshin Impact was famously very similar, similar to Breath of the Wild. Uh, they're like taking things that work and then adding on fun stuff on top of that that people uh, a huge audience shows up for and it's a bigger audience every day. So yeah, that that's a, a big part of it. And then Western studios are just deathly afraid of all this stuff. They they are afraid of risks. Yeah, and well, Honkai Star Rail is just Persona, but but like right, even yeah. more anime somehow. Yeah. Right, it's it's Persona, but yes, even more anime. And it turns out that's like something that. A huge audience is like, please just give me that. I don't really care about anything else beyond that. Just give me that. Well, David says, hey, Mike, how are your flights? Oh, they're both pretty good. On the flight there, I just fell asleep, which is ideal. The flight back, uh, there wasn't anybody else in my row, so my group got to spread out. Although I, I could not sleep. I was getting, uh, I was starting to sneeze. I don't know if that kept me up. But uh, very rarely actually take out my Switch and actually play it on the plane. Even though it's bring it because I'm terrified I'm going to get bored. So I actually did bring out my Switch and play it on the plane, which is a very rare occurrence. B says, I'm currently playing Super Mario RPG and I'm enjoying it and plan on playing all the other Mario RPG games on my Steam Deck over time. What other series would you like to see in a Mario RPG format? Um, I would be pretty interested to see what Metroid would be like. Yeah, a turn-based Metroid RPG could actually be pretty cool that does sound like a lot of fun i think that's how you bring back eternal darkness uh eternal darkness as a a turn-based rpg uh could be fun you do some cool stuff at the time yeah i know i say this one a lot star tropics would actually well yeah that of course of course that'd be cool yeah i mean i think it would be a lot like earthbound at that point but whatever (laughs) i'll take it uh why don't we take a break jeff we'll get to the rest of these we'll get to some more super chats and other things uh how's how's that sound sounds good All right, die a little bit and yeah, death break. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> Let me get the ginger ale. I think I got bro. Speaking of uh, the Mihoyo, that that CCC game is that shit is crisp as fuck. That I'm game, forward to that. Which that one is this? Would, you know why they make so much money right? because they're like, oh, people like, like they like fucking sell that, but why don't we do that? And we go hard on the shit and on anime shit, and they do they go like one thousand percent into that shit. The same they did with the Persona game, the, the Hunger Star Rally. We're gonna go like we're just gonna do this shit. We're gonna put a bunch of fucking money. It's gonna be free to play. It's gonna look like a three player game. We're just gonna do it. And now they're doing it with third person action game with this uh, Sunless Sun Zero uh, game. It's gonna be fucking. It's gonna be good. Yep. I'm telling you, shit, it's good. Uh, now, how do you think that uh, there's that persona mobile game did that ever come out or is that still coming or what that's it's coming it's coming out how do you think that's gonna do uh here or like because up until now it's been china only that's like the limiting factor yeah here in the west is not good is it just china i thought it was like yeah i thought me hoyo does pretty good in the west right like oh yeah yeah, but yeah, also they, keep in mind, Persona is not nearly as big as people think it is. Yeah, but I yeah. mean, Honkai Star Rail was that? Is that wasn't established? Well, maybe it was established. Was it established? And I'm just forgetting. Well, Genshin just well, took the hell off, yeah. and then people were like, "Oh, it's from the Genshin people." Okay. I'll play that. Yep. Like, All right, yeah. fair enough. Um, yeah, I don't know how much that game's gonna. All right, be. let's get back to it. Hope up there's gonna... Yep, I'm All ready. Right. And we're back. Riz Racer, which reminds me, Jeff, I know I've been gone. I don't know if you made any other moves on your investigation 
on the future of Ridge Racer. The concert got announced last time I was here, so that's very exciting. You think they will announce a new Ridge Racer game there? I don't know. Okay. Uh, hey, dogs, the announcement of Pokemon <laughs> Legends ZA has me wonder wondering what Pokemon would be... Oh, what Pokemon would be good on a za slash pizza? <laughs> the idea of LeChonk Bacon doing anything for you uh, or something else. Um, most of them. Most of them would be good. What would be the most upsetting Pokemon to, like, Kill Bulbasaur lettuce. Mr. Mime. The, the Bulbasaur leaves. Yeah. Yeah, imagine if you ate Mr. Mime. Yeah, imagine. Yeah. I know what Mr. Mime meat. Mr. Mime meat. <laughs> Mr. Mime meat. What, what's, the, Chris is, what's the other, what, like, what? humanoid one from the from Jinx. 151? Jinx. Yeah, that. Yeah, Jinx. Jinx would be yeah, upsetting, Jinx is too. like, Jinx, Jinx is upsetting for other reasons, too. <laughs> so I'm like, eh, I don't want to, no, we're not doing that. Uh... Uh, GameCube Chris says, hey, dogs, hope all is well. Random question, but what is your favorite weird game publisher? For some reason, I love THQ Nordic. Sure. Uh, I'm, I'm a, I am a Focus Home Entertainment. I think they changed the name just like Focus now, but uh, I, I like many other games. Like and right now, um, or that was, that did include uh, like a, a snow runner and stuff like that. Now, obviously, like Embracer sort of has brought that stuff in, and I don't know if that's Focus anymore. Uh, but Focus has done a lot of stuff that I'm like, this is like a pretty decent publisher. And there's like five or six games like that from them. Is there a weird publisher that I like? I'm trying to think. There's like somebody that's like weird. I don't know. Like the Volver Digital makes fun stuff. I guess their whole point is that they're kind of supposed right. to be weird. Is Night Dive weird to people? I like Night Dive a lot. Yeah. I mean, I, I get what you mean. But yeah, not too weird. Not too weird. Uh, Jump Matt says, hey, guys, how much do you think the addition of 4K to Nintendo games will slow down their development? A little, but I, I even when they are putting 4K assets into games, which I, I, I have no idea if that's actually something they might do with this next gen, even if it's like cause it, it'll output at 4K. It's not going to render at 4K almost certainly, but they might be able to upscale, upscale 4K. I hope that Nintendo, Nintendo has learned that for their games, that is in, that is unnecessary. They don't need to do yes. that. Their assets already look better than everyone else's assets. Uh, Mario, I think Mario Kart 8 Deluxe still looks better than just about any game anyone puts out. So I, they yeah. they are fine. Yeah, I don't think <laughs> Murphy's like I don't think anybody should actually make 4K assets. Uh, but I, I, I guess I'm learning. I'm a little weird about that. Like I'm surprised how many people like don't want to play Final Fantasy VII Rebirth on the performance mode because they they think it looks too blurry and. I don't know. Like, I, I, I definitely noticed the face lighting looking kind of rough sometimes, but like, I'll take that at 60 FPS over 30 FPS. And I don't care how crisp the picture is any day. Yep. But again, it's it's obviously difficult because people have different preferences there. Uh, next one here is from Big Tony. The Final Fantasy guy says, my dogs, me and my buddy took a vacation day to play Final Fantasy Rebirth. He literally abandoned his pregnant wife and kid to play. Excellent. Good. <laughs> Anyway, do you guys still take time off of work to play video games or you just play on company time now? Thanks. Sometimes I'll play on company time. And honestly, even then, I feel kind of guilty if I'm like playing uh, a game from that nine to five yep. slot. Most of Same. my gaming does just happen in the evening still. Uh, like I, I did do it a bit during Final Fantasy VII Rebirth because it was like, you know, I was really grinding to get through that. But otherwise, not really. Yep. I mean, if I'm playing on company time, it's because I, I made a show and we're going to stream it and stuff like that. So, yeah. Isaac Clark says, howdy, gents. What attribute do you admire most about your co-host? Uh, his hair. His baldness. Like a Dylan, Infinite Wolf says, hey, dogs, how do I get over this crippling Bellatro addiction? Um, no, you, you got a while to go. Don't worry. You'll get you'll get sick of it. Eventually. Yeah, you, you'll burn. Right you'll burn through it. You will. Yeah, I'll be fine. Uh, Swisp says, hey, Jeff and Mike, what's the worst game you ever received as a gift? Your Lee Carvalho's putting challenge, if you will. Minus dinosaurs for hire for the Genesis. Thank you and have a wonderful night. Um, I think we, when we got the PS2 for Christmas, I think one of the random games my dad got me was some NASCAR launch game for it that I did not like. That's sticking out like, you know, it was atrocious. I didn't think it was a very good game, um, but I don't know. I don't know if I got a, any. Usually when I got a gift game, it was something. I had asked for, and I usually was getting enough magazines that I had a pretty good grasp on what game would at least be sort of decent. Every once in a while, like I, I asked for the all real monsters game for Genesis, and it wasn't great, but uh, oh well, nothing crazy. I like I never like I got 
Bubsy 3D, but it wasn't a present. It was just we went to the store and I probably was obnoxious and begged my parents for it because I liked Bubsy when I rented it from Blockbuster. Uh, I uh, the, I just remember the one where I was kind of shitty because uh, the Super Nintendo, I had that, and I got Vice Project Doom for the NES. And Vice Project Doom is actually a pretty good game, but I, I was uh, like, well, this is for the NES. I'm not playing that anytime soon, if ever. So I'm just going to keep playing these Super Nintendo games. And then years later, I finally did play it, and been like, it was like, this is a pretty good game. Uh, but that's, that's the one that sticks out to me that's in that vein, but that was mostly me being shitty and not the game. Input name here says, hey, guys, my wife, went call my wife wants Culver's tonight, but I'm not feeling oh, it. Is it Exceptico? <laughs> Exceptico. Exceptico. Is it, acceptable <laughs> is it acceptable to also pick up a burger at Wendy's during the same trip? Thanks. Yeah, just look out for that surge pricing. No, they didn't do that. <laughs> um, if you're driving, yeah, you go do what you want. Yeah, I think this is uh, I think this is more normal now than ever before. And I'll say that because I do it all when you have kids and they start getting the, the definitely picky, have to do it for kids. Yeah. The picky eating phase. I'm like, I'm fucking not eating McDonald's again. Uh, you find yourself going, OK, Steph, what do you want? You want Freddy's? OK. And there's a fucking place that sells Philly cheesesteaks next door. I'll go get that for myself and then I'll get them McDonald's. Like I'll go to three different places on one trip. I don't care. I always like that arc because I think the first time the parents are like, that's ridiculous. We're just going to go to McDonald's. And then the meltdown is so bad that the next time we're like, no, we'll do what you want. Yep. Yeah. Please it's it's not where you pick your battles. Hell. Yep. Vision 49 says, do you think if we all pull our money, we could buy Tommy Tallarico's house and turn it into a VA center for console war veterans? <laughs> yeah, we can do that. Nice. You know, yeah, like he was on Cribs twice. Oh, yeah. His mother must be so proud. We could be in Cribs a third time. Yeah. <laughs> what a funny lie. The Reaper of Wolf <laughs> Fives is what's up, dogs? I wanted to shout Jeff out for his recommendation of Cavern of Dreams. Great tribute to the N64 era of platformers. My question is this. Is there any era of games you could feasibly only play games from that generation and not feel burnt out? For example, playing only 360 PS3 Wii generation games. Oh, there's a couple. I, I could be good with the 16-bit era, but I think I'd probably be most happy with that GameCube PS2 Xbox era. That's, I think that's definitely my favorite era. So yeah, if I had to pick one. The GameCube, PS2. That's why this collection behind me. That's mostly what that is. It's those three consoles. Yeah, I think that's that's going to be kind of the um, the butter zone where it's like there are so many games mm -hmm. of so many different kinds and types, and also they're they're pretty well. They learned a lot of lessons from the previous 3D generation that made those games much better in a lot of ways. So yeah, I, I, it would be that generation for me as well. But I I would be fine with 360 PS3 Wii um, to a certain extent. Maybe, maybe. I think I'd, I'd be a lot happier with the GameCube one. Yeah, well, yeah, me too. I would prefer the GameCube over the Wii. Cam out of Texas says, Hey, my dog duders, have any of you or friends or family members ever made a huge career change or pivot, and how did it go? I've been working in IT for 13 years, and I'm getting sick of it, and I'm currently working on several certifications um, that will hopefully lead to something new. Do you have any stories or advice? Thanks. I did have one friend who got some kind of like a bit normal business degree, it was doing like that kind of stuff, and then just stopped went to tech school and learned to become a welder and was much happier so that kind of stuff does happen but nobody like closer to me than that yeah i mean if, for me it was like were those things careers before i started doing this or was that just me killing time trying to hope something would, would click into place with writing about games um but like i definitely had things where it's like hey i'm in a union and this is a good job and it pays well and and uh i'm going for this and it's like i got a little bit annoyed so i just fucking quit and then i would just get a different job that was actually kind of worse a lot and i did that a lot and um and eventually i got to this but it's not exact i never considered any of those things to be career so maybe that's not exactly what you're talking about they um they the, the uh, pizza place that i worked at uh before doing this it was kind of like the one like job that i really think about a lot they just randomly shut down <laughs> like, oh really uh, like the day before i left yeah, it's interesting. Like, cause it was a bit of a town institution, so everybody was a bit worked up about it. But like, the people went into work, and there's just a sign like "We're closed forever." Whoa! <laughs> like, due to wild. unforeseen circumstances, so we're not sure exactly what happened. Oh but, yeah. man! So, but it's like almost all my like when I I don't post on Facebook, but I'll go on there anymore. Almost all my friends on there these days are just people that I worked with while I was there. So they were all upset and posting pictures, and I was in some of them and. Oh, uh, like, you know, the, the, the after work party uh, hours. Good times. So shout out to Inner Circle Pizza Poland. I'll miss <laughs> you. Uh, 
Cryosis, Cryorsis, excuse me, says, hey, Beef and Cheddar Boys, what's your favorite thing from Arby's? I do just like a plain roast beef sandwich. Put some Arby's sauce on it. That's going to, you know, the curly fry meal. It died, Dr. Pepper. That is pretty good. Obviously, Beef and Cheddar is great. Sometimes it's, you know, a bit decadent. I also like that chicken bacon Swiss a lot. Hold the lettuce and tomato, please. I'm not trying to eat a salad. Uh, yeah, uh, Mike's right about the roast beef, the classic roast beef, roast beef actually being the best thing, but, um, I also really like the buffalo chicken sandwich. They do a really good, good one of those. I or, like the buffalo, I get the buffalo chicken slider with my roast beef yes. meal. Just and a it, little, little bit. Yes. And it, they, you know, it's not like the greatest buffalo chicken in the world, but it's a really solid for a fast food place. And then, um, they do actually those like market fresh deli sandwiches. Um, that's what Steph gets. Those are actually surprisingly good. Screaming Madden says, Hey dogs. I've been in a mood to play retro games this year as I've beaten games like Super Mario Bros. 3, Grim Fandango, and am now playing games like F-Zero X and Dark Forces Remastered. Have you guys had years where you've wanted to play more retro games than modern ones? Yeah, two years ago. Like last year, I was very busy just playing, just keeping up with all the games coming out. 2022, I was playing a ton of retro games. That's when I really started collecting a lot of these GameCube games, and I was playing a lot of them. I kind of want to get back to that. I think of I'm going to have an opportunity because as crazy as these first few months have been, it seems like there is eventually going to be a dry spell. Feels coming, like no right, fucking Jeff? game's going to ever come out again here in a couple of months. Is what it actually right. feels like. Yeah, it feels like it's been insane. We got Dragon Sarma 2 coming out. Apparently that's going to be amazing. But it seems like maybe after that, <laughs> like it's going to get a little quiet. So, uh, yeah, I think I'll be playing some more old games. And that's fine by me. I like that Same. stuff. Yeah, there's a ton. I mean, I am like. Oh, I'm like, oh, I want to play Mother this year. I want to play a bunch of other stuff. I want to uh, go back and catch up on a million PS2 things I missed. So, yeah, I, I've definitely had years like that for sure. I think when the, the Steam Deck came out, yeah, I played a lot of Elden Ring. But then the rest of that time, it was I am going to be playing old games on this thing. So I spent a lot of year, that year doing that. Yeah, and there's definitely some years, like maybe six years ago when I was in my apartment. I remember a lot of my gaming was on my Vita, just playing like PS1 or other RPGs that were released on that system. That's when I was playing like Breath of Fire 4 and Sweet It in 2 and a bunch of stuff like that. Um, DMC Depressed Me Crying says, Greetings, Cheddar Czar and Baron Beef. What games mechanics would you bring in real life? I choose Kirby Star Allies. I wish having friends was real. But Depressed Me Crying is really <laughs> living up to his name today. So yep. <laughs> thank you for that. Uh, no, I don't know. Uh, I wish I wish I, I wish I could fly like Superman, Superman 64. I wish I could slide uh, gracefully across the ground like Sub-Zero in Mortal Kombat mythologies. Um, I would do uh, a good mechanic. I don't know why this is coming to mind, but um, the Saints Row insurance a fraud game where like you just go in front of cars and you, and you try to like to get hurt as much as possible. To get a bunch of money, but it's like it doesn't actually hurt them. They just bounce right back. I think that'd be pretty cool. Ahead. Yeah, I know. I, just, I know you would hit me with a car, Christian. You'd say it all the time. <laughs> I, I, I want to give Jeff the ability from Mirror's Edge, where his, uh, where he needs to go has like objects just painted in red, so he has a good idea. I'm worried about Jeff getting lost. That'd be nice. I, I appreciate that. Thinking for everything me. in life, you know what I mean. Acting real, but for everything in life, whatever you. Oh, that's real for everything. That's yeah, yeah, really yeah. good, Christian. That's a good call. Like, <laughs> yeah, like you do. I don't. I yeah, like the ketchup of, bottle. Like, like you fix, need to, like yeah. the ketchup bottle. Like you need to, like shake the ketchup to get the, uh, to get it out. And yeah. it's like if you just get it perfectly, it just comes out perfectly. Yeah, you flick a, a pancake or something when you're yeah. cooking, and you know, yep. For everything. Allie Miracle says, <laughs> "Evening, boys. The Podcast. recent Mario, <laughs> the, the recent Mario Maker streams on Giant Bomb reminded me of this drawer full of silly ass amiibos I got just to specifically using that game." Any game you all eventually got them for or made you stop getting them. They definitely were fun in Mario Maker. They were better in that than in a lot of things. I almost always, even from the get-go, was more interested in just collecting them and having them than using them for video games. I never really collected but, them. I never got any. Yeah. Not really. I got I, mean, I got one right here. I got the ones that Nintendo would send to me. I do want to get that Sora one at some point. Might be the last Amiibo I ever get. Who knows? I'm still salty we didn't get Gino and Malo Amiibos. But what can you do? Bad timing. Mike, I uh, I noticed you yeah. didn't use Ali Miracle's full name tonight. Ali, oh look at that, Ali Miracle, M Luigi and Mario. Ah, <laughs> uh, what? Does it show differently on your end? It is. Yeah, to me, it just says Ali Miracle. Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, so say it. Never mind. Oh, what is it for you? 
Uh, she changed it to, at some point to Alamaris Cerveza Crystal, <laughs> uh, which I assume was to fuck with mine. So, uh, okay, I like it. See, uh, I'm glad you wrote that. Oh, there you go. Michael Riley says, hello. No question. Just wanted to say fuck all the clowns cutting other people's jobs when they make the salary. Attend to those people. Cut and don't lose a dime when they're the assholes making shitty decisions that are being the reasons jobs need to be cut. Yep, 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 oh, yep, yeah. yep, yep, yep. Yep, absolutely. Zoomer, Zoomer says, hello there. I tried Bellacho and refunded it 13 minutes in. Right to the tutorial. I was shocked because I did not expect the game for poker players to be popular. And this game was popular. I suddenly realized poker must be more popular than I thought. This reminds me of when I played Breath of the Wild, and it felt like it broke uh, things open world games had already long solved. Ever been in a similar situation of being shocked at something's popularity? Uh, yeah, Red Dead Redemption 2. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not actually shocked that that's popular. <laughs> um, uh, I guess, yeah, I don't know. Like uh, you know, I, I like that. I'm like that with a lot of TV. Like you know, I never thought that I ever saw a lot of Game of Thrones, but anytime I do, there's a video. He's like, oh, okay, <laughs> this is this is the thing now that everyone got real excited. There, about. We gotta understand there was boobies and penises in that show. So yeah, that's true. I get it. I was like, okay, that's fine. So, but yeah, it happens. Um, that's it for podcast producers. Thank you so much, everybody. Uh. Christian, do we need another break, or should we just go into the rest of these super chats and other stuff? Give me a small break, please. We'll take a small break, everybody. I'll be right back. And we are back. Uh, Jeff, we got some more super chats, my friend. Uh, Ali Miracle is back. Says evening, boyos. I am feeling poopy tonight as well. Getting me a nice sandwich slash Tylenol combo for dinner. Uh, go to what's your go to sick dinner? I um I don't know why like it should be soup and this probably isn't right but for some reason when I'm like sick I just want something that I can kind of sh- like fork into my mouth and it's soft so I do like mac and cheese a lot when I'm sick. Oh, that's, that's that sounds comforting. I, it's I get comforting. That. It's just like yeah you know, it's always good. It's easy. I can eat it. or it's somewhere I can just make it very easily and just shovel it down. Yeah, it's it's nice. It depends on what kind of sick, but um most of the time I want something spicy so. Um, usually like, uh, like an Asian dish where I could put on some like sriracha or something like that, or even like a ramen. And I put some sriracha in there instead. I definitely do. I really only do buy ginger ale when I'm sick anymore. I just had a- AJ actually picked this up for me, left it in the front door. I picked it up during one of those breaks. Mm, that's um, nice. Yes. Uh, thank you, AJ. Um, I don't, I, I know like ginger is good for your stomach. I don't know, even though stomach's not even really my issue right now, but it's just like a thing. When I was sicky, my mommy gave me ginger ale. So now whenever I'm sick, I want to have ginger ale. I, I, yeah. It makes me feel better. And that must have been a thing of that era. I don't I wonder if people still do that. Yeah, I was, I was thinking that too, Jeff. I think I, I was about to ask you. I bet your parents did something similar. Definitely. I don't know if they still do. I don't really know how many restorative properties are in Canada Dry. <laughs> Zero sugar. But you know what? This tastes good. I do like me. Don't, oh, don't worry, Nick. I actually I put it in the freezer for a while. This one's cold. This one's nice, ready to go. Ooh, good stuff. Uh, All right. David Ladau says, speaking of Ohio, are you guys excited for Nancy's home cooking to be re- reopening in Hilliard? <laughs> so this came up on another episode. I've never been to Nancy's home cooking in Hilliard. I've been to Hilliard. That's a Where's suburb Hilliard? of Columbus. Yeah. Oh, oh see, I- I am so northeastern coded specifically. We get Columbus is like actually like, pretty a, a trek for both of us at this point. Yeah, it's like three hours away. I haven't been to Columbus in like a decade. It's been a while since I've been over there. Um, then like Cincinnati, I drove through it once. <laughs> like Cincinnati, I mean, it might may as well be, as well be yeah. in Morocco. Yes, <laughs> like, it, got, it's that, so that, far that's away. A yeah, different country as far as I'm concerned. Yep uh let's see here eden says are you sure though dogs one university is in akron not even columbus the most ohio city in ohio akron is very ohio yeah akron's closer to me yep i love akron you akron's can, uh, all right hey, akron's at- all right you would be fine in it's akron. fine yeah and you're close to cleveland and um, yeah you're close to canton you can go to the football hall of fame Yep. Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in Cleveland. And, 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 you know. and if you are, like, if you're going to university, you just drive up to Canada, go drinking when you're 19, have a good time. There like, you know. yeah. You know, okay. Cedar Point, not too far away from you. You'll have fun. Uh, Kevin says, Bellatro assist trophy in the next Smash Brothers. But if that game's selling well, Nintendo will notice, and that could happen. Uh, 
Zubmer, Zubmer says, what are the chances Zaslav is a saboteur? Like, I don't think we can completely discount that. That seems possible. Like someone sent from the future to, uh, to disassemble Warner Brothers. Um, MD I'm going to make saboteur brand Cabernet Sauvignon. <laughs> Uh, MDY says, I eat at Xenoblade 2 because I like their wings. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I still haven't been to Twin Peaks yet. They opened that here. Maybe that's why Inner Circle closed. Twin Peaks was right next to it. Couldn't handle the competition. Uh, and then Nick says, Mike, pack the yes. face paint. No. Abs oh. Excuse me. Absolutely not. That's people oh, are going to have to just deal with that. There's some bubbles in this Canada Dry. <laughs> that, was, yeah, that was definitely a, uh, a, a Canada Dry burp right there. That's what they sound <laughs> Absolutely like. Absolutely was. Uh, Dogman shows up and says, Hey, dogs, heard recently you didn't have enough roguelikes to play. So if you haven't yet checked out DRG Survivor, a great uh, versus like and Doom Infinite, which is a mod that adds a ton uh, beyond RNG levels. Keep up the great work. That man, the newer Doom games or whatever, or just Doom in general would be a great fit for a roguelike. Absolutely. Yes, it definitely would be. Uh, yeah. I mean, uh, yeah, there's some really cool stuff they do with that. And it's all about getting in and attacking. And that's a great fit for roguelite. Transitioning slightly here. Right before I left, I did boot up Dark Forces remastered um, on Steam. Just to play that, you know, I, I actually just I did replay that game last year because there's the Force Engine kind of fan thing. So right, the game was already there already was a solution to play that game on modern PCs. But this uh, having this is also very nice, and it did just look great, and it did run great. It was my my one complaint, and it's similar to complaint I have a lot of these things. It's always so weird to me when the default font for these retro projects for pixelated games is this really smooth, like sans serif normie font uh that just looks really out of place and kind of cheap that's basically it also for life me i couldn't find a way to do a quick save and quick load option maybe they just don't want you to like that's fine although i think other night that remasters did have that so that's that's, that's got to be in there somewhere i I'll, thought so I'll too take, maybe check. i just maybe i just missed it mm, but, yeah um, weird i did find you know they did have that option to have the original cutscenes, which is like the one thing i was maybe a little worried about but you have all the other good stuff that you want like you can turn off that like that bobble effect that all those Doom yes. games have for some reason. I was, I was, I, when I was doing my walk the other day, it was after playing that game, and I'm like, that's not what happens when you walk. <laughs> you know, your head does not bob that much. I, I don't know what that like, is. Like, even if it does, <laughs> even if your head is moving up quite a bit, like your vision just compensates and does not actually send that information to your brain. So it's yes. like, it's such a wild thing that games did. Um, but yeah, I, I, I played that. I got it, I got it, uh, both, I went on the Steam Deck, but I also got the Switch version. And it runs great on Switch. It's really good. Yeah, I probably kind of wants to get it on there. Um, yeah, I played uh, the Turok Remaster on Switch, and I played Power Slave on Switch, and it was actually right. really fun to do that. Um, man, uh, Dark Night Dive. I love Dark Night Dive. One of the, secretly one of the best Switch studios. Yes, actually, absolutely. They put a bunch of good stuff on there. Dark Forces is great. I think this remaster is a is a lot of fun. I just I just um, love those sprites in the three D world. Look, I know. It looks so it looks good. Great. It's like, I hope it's not nostalgia. I know it is a little bit. And it's one of those things, like, I don't know why it bothers me, but when, like, people do look at Dark Forces and they, they don't see anything in it, and just like, just like oh, I'm glad that nothing's like this anymore. It, it, I don't want to say it bugs me out a little bit. It makes me a little sad. Yeah, I get even no, a little sad when people are like, oh, I didn't care until they added the lightsaber in the sequel. So I'm like, oh, no, this is cool, though. No, this, this is got, really like, good. It's got a I do think attitude. I was like that. I think when because like, when I was a kid, I kind of missed the original Dark Forces and only knew the series when Jedi Knight came out. And I don't think I went back to Dark Forces for a long time because I was like, well, that one doesn't have a lightsaber. Who cares? Right. And I was silly of me. So I understand why people do feel like I, that. I get it. I get it, man. too. I just I just it does bum me out. I I really do hope that they just do Dark Forces to Jedi Knight also and then. I'll, sp I'll spare you, but the other ones. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, uh, Night Dive should just do get all of those done. That would be great. Uh, that would be a fantastic thing if they were to uh, update all of those. Think, all four? Yeah. Um, those At least one of those games is playable on the Switch is... I don't think Jedi Academy is. Uh, Jedi but, Outcast is. Yeah, Jedi yeah. Outcast already did get ported. You're right. That's right. That already it's, it's not, I they're not like... Night dive style like updates. I don't think they no. are. They're Aspire games, which is yeah. Aspire does an okay job with those. My like Jedi Outcast had a GameCube port when it was new, which is weird. That's right. Yeah, I think I rented yeah. that I game. Think I have it. Yeah, 
can't that imagine. Was, that was weird. I kind of want to play that now. Yeah, I have no idea how well that works. I love Jedi Aka, so it might be my favorite of those games. That that one's really fun. Um, but other than that, Jeff, uh, that when when I was on the plane, I was like trying to play something for a little bit. For, for whatever reason, whenever I just like need to play something for a little bit, I usually go into the NSO stuff. So I was kind of messing around with things. I actually played that Battle Toads and Battle Maniacs on Super Nintendo. Oh, really? Sean said isn't. No, no, Sean didn't say that. Somebody said it's not that good. And they're right. It's fine. <laughs> it's just. Yeah, that's like, never the one that I think of to go back to. Yeah. I like Battletoads and Double Dragons. That one, that one is I good. Like. Yeah. That one is actually pretty. Or the arcade one is fun also. Um, but then I play Blast Cores for just a little bit. And man, that game's fun. I definitely need to spend more time. I'm so happy to have Ooh. Blast Cores on there. This makes me happy to see it there. Yeah, I, I mean, I just think that game is neat. It's cool. It's a good idea. Um, I'm glad that it, more people are getting a chance to play it. Um, but yeah, but you know, any Nintendo stuff that you've been, I mean, other than dark forces on the switch, uh, not yeah. much. The kids playing, like I said, like always a ton of stuff on switch all the time. She's going back to Mario Odyssey. So we're playing through some of that. Nice. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, I just not much else. I, I did spend a lot of time getting through like a dragon. So that's finished now. You I'll, beat it by the way. Good job. I did beat it. Yes, it was. And it was, it was a lot to get through. It really is a, a, a game that just at a certain point does keep going. Thank you. Uh, but no, no it real sounds complaints like you about almost that. Regret beating it. I, you know, I just, I do wonder. It's like, am I beating this because I, that's what I want, or because I feel I would feel bad if I didn't? And it's like the Most reality is, I'm beating it right now. Thank you, thank you, past me. I got what to do that. <laughs> I, the, the reality is, I don't, I don't regret beating it. I did enjoy playing it. The ending is very good. Um, or the like the, the the end of the story, the, the stuff that happens there is very good. But it's like there was definitely times where I'm like, oh, I, would, I think I'd be happier if I was playing something else now. I definitely got a lot of great stuff out of like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Why am I kind of putting myself through that? There was, you know, the, being under leveled for the final boss and not having an easy way to level up was frustrating. Mm -hmm. It just was. But got over it. Figured it out. Good game. I think we got a couple more super chats we need to we do before we can get out of here. Uh, let's see here. I think, yeah, we did this one from Dugmund. Uh, Burrito says, can you incorporate that triangle? Into Cabernet, Cabernet, how do you, Savignon? Sa Savignon. Savignon. Sa Cabernet Savignon. Yeah. Uh, uh, I guess that is what I say. Savatore Brown Cabernet Savignon. That's right. <laughs> Podcast. Uh, David Ladau says, what do you think are the best toilets in video games? I asked because, shameless plug, my TikTok and Instagram are devo devo yeah. devoted Excuse me, to that topic. I'm, I think about the Half-Life 2 toilets a lot. They were very dirty. They look, I, I forget if it is, it's just really dirty. It just looks like there might straight up be shit in the toilets at all times. But I remember very dirty toilets. Like everything's dirty in Half-Life 2, right? Right, but, yeah. Uh, very dirty toilets. I, 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 those are the toilets that occurred to me first as well. Um, I think Deus Ex, uh, the, all, the, all the Deus Ex games have toilets that like, you know, you could flush. And so I think about those. And then, um... Duke Nukem 3D. Yeah, I was about to say, Duke Nukem 3D had, like, one of the first toilets I remember you could, like, use, and you yeah. hear the zipper and piss effect. Like, oh, yeah, well. Man, this guy's got a penis. Yeah. Oh, it's crazy, dude. Yeah. I like the Hitman toilets because you can drown people on them. Oh, that's good. That's a good, good poll. Absolutely. Um, I think that, yeah, we're caught up on the Super Chats once again. All right, then. Well, uh, man, I tell you what. Jeff, why is no one talking about the cuck tent scene? Yes, thank you. So, 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 sometimes you simply know when you just record the worst podcast in history. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of those times for sure. Thank you, Fred Flintstone. Can we talk about the cuck tent scene? <laughs> you know, yummy fruity pebbles in a bowl. Man, what God, I'm like what super say? craving uh, fruity pebbles now. Ro Oh, here comes you know who. Yabba dabba fruit, delicious do. Oh, 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 I'm hungry. He's going through the My pebbles, your pebbles. Tis the season to be sharing, Fred. Happy holidays, pal. Oh, Fred. Fruity and cocoa pebble cereals, part of this nutritious breakfast. Oh, 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 I'm hungry. Oh, man. And then, uh, and then all the comments are just like, Things used to be better. <laughs> every comment. Is, every, every time I see this, I want to cry. Too many memories. Um, 
I from Salazar Del Toro. I miss the world when there was still love left in it. <laughs> I think that's the one that. <laughs> That's right, that you got it. <laughs> oh, <God>. holy shit. <laughs> Play the fucking music, get me out of here. Oh, there it goes. There we are. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you. Oh, my God. Oh, the going to go Thursday. down so smooth tonight. Oh, boy. <laughs> I'll take some more Tylenol. Let's go. Let's fucking go. Thanks for listening, everybody. Uh, White Club tomorrow, Super Dance 64. Game mess decides on Thursday. There's some other things. Something. What, what, I'm playing Mario Kart. Is that happening? That's Grand Prix. Thing? Grand Prix. Let's Gra go. Yep. Grand Prix. Grand Prix on Friday. Mike. Five, five hours. What? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what, were you, what were you gonna ask me about that? <laughs> <laughs> you got the calendar invite. What else do you need? What does that start? I don't remember. Uh, let me look don't here. Twelve thirty. Twelve thirty. <laughs> Bye, everybody. <laughs> we'll see you, maybe. <laughs> 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 I miss when the world still has a love left in it. Oh my sir, this is Wendy. <laughs> Send him to the cock tent. Bye everybody. Send him to the tent of cuckoldry. <laughs>